Hey everyone! Hey! Oh my god. I was reading the Godzilla comment. You aren't awake. Fuck! You just fully are not just awake. very distracted. You're just right entirely now. asleep. You're all the entire way asleep. Because you can't see my brain moving. It's like, pow, poo. Yeah. You just can't see that. No one can see your brain moving. More for you. Um. Hey everyone! Yo. We're gonna read some posts. I have a bunch of submissions this week. People I also went, have some. People went absolutely nuts on giving us submissions. It was very cool. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yes, thank you, everybody. I'm quite excited about it. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, we just watched a video. What video? Everyone watched a video. My video. Your video. You know what the video you was you videos? watched it too. Don't oh do my this God, to me. That's so cool. Why are you doing this? <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> so I'm here to chat about the video of it. There's definitely a lot because you just you sort of jumped around between some like linked up subjects, but there's so much you can I had say read about each one. Two and a half books by John E. Douglas <laughs> when I finished the video. You've listened to another one since then. I finished that third one. I started another one. Yeah. There were a lot of things that didn't make it into the script because I was still researching as I went along. That story about Kimberly Coma. Right. That was a very, very, very late edition. And I was just like, I was just, because the thing is, like, if, and this happens fairly often, like, I'll just be reading the book and I'll just kind of go, oh, well, this thing reinforces my point, but I've already got something else that's a good quote yeah. and it does the job. The thing about Kimberly Coma, the woman who is stalked by the BTK Strangler for a year and a fucking half and who called the cops on him and was told to calm down by the cops, that, I just heard that in the, you know, I heard that in the audiobook, and I was just like, well, that's fucking going in. That's fucking going in the video then. And I had to, like, ask Molly to extend the track of that section by, like, a minute and a half, because I was just like, I need to say that bit. Um, yeah, that was fucked. That was super fucked. I've just finished um, The Killer's Shadow by John Douglas, which is about his experiences with a white supremacist serial killer who was at various times a sniper, an arsonist, a bomb maker, uh, just a, a dude who would kidnap women, coax them into saying that they would be comfortable sleeping with a black man and then murder them for that horrible Right, tre white supremacist treason. killer who still, so surprisingly for some women, mostly would but for some reason mostly murdered women. Huh. White women. Why? Oh, that's weird. More than anyone else, he murdered white women because, you know, because um, of reasons. It's just it's just so bizarre. Like, the, the, the book is like, uh, finally acknowledges racism as being a thing and uh, still won't acknowledge misogyny. Just still won't acknowledge that misogyny is a thing. Just still. <laughs> it's like, the book mentions how um and it's just so bizarre the book mentions how uh oh no oh geez oh. something bad's happening over here on this screen sorry um the book mentions how like after his i think it was after the synagogue shooting the police having exhausted all other theories returned to racism it's like yeah, man, it's a synagogue shooting. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, such bad cop brain. Um, anyway, so that's, yeah, it's just like... It's just... Yeah. Uh, I have a lot to say, but I'd much rather first hear anyone's comments if you had anything to say about the video we all just watched. Do you have any thoughts? Um... Um, yeah, I, and then after that, but I mean, we'll carry, we'll obviously just carry on talking about it because my brain is so full 
of John Douglas's cop nonsense now that I cannot not talk about it. But after this initial section, we'll go on to our usual thing, which is reading posts and drinking. Um, and uh, we're reading Emma the Asshole and our slash relationships posts. And um, we we have some submissions. I have a lot more submissions this week than I usually get. So I've, I've got four to read you. Sweet. Uh, nice. We've got loads of submissions this week. And, um, you know, that's it basically. The video was great. That's a good comment. Thank you. <laughs> Gotta vent that cop nonsense. I absolutely do. <laughs> uh, so rarely talked about and I try to make a big thing about anyone who speaks up in it. So thanks. What's that? Just want to make 100% certain I say thank you one more time for mentioning how unfairly schizophrenics are treated infection. <laughs> Yeah, um, for those who haven't already, we watched a great show called Maniac the other day, um, which was just like yeah, really such gorgeous. a sympathetic portrayal. I mean, I don't know how accurate it is, but it was such a sympathetic portrayal of this schizophrenic guy. It's Jonah Hill, which makes it so, like, it's such an unusual role for Jonah Hill, so don't let it being Jonah Hill colour things at all. It's, really it's great. like nothing else he's been in. But yeah, he's really sympathetic and really lovely and quite sad, quite sweet. Um, I cried at the ending, partly just because of like my overwhelming fear of the idea of being sectioned, like so horrible. Uh, it has a happy ending. I'm gonna say that ahead of time for those who are scared by what I've just said. <laughs> it has a happy ending. Yeah, it's really lovely. It's really good. It's called Maniac and it's on Netflix. Uh, really like the point you made about X-Files and BPRD being displacement fiction. I'd never made that connection. Thank you. I thought, so I said this to Natalie when I was editing it, but I got to the, I got to the point where I just like had said it so many times. I'd written the script. I'd read the script so many times. I'd recorded it. I'd edited it. I'd watched it so many times that the observation that the X-Files is basically serial killer stories was just like, to me, Yeah. I was just like, who cares? I was just like, just like everyone that's, knows that's this. Just fact. Everyone yeah. knows this. Um, I'm gonna turn this back over. Yeah, that was really cool. Like, especially um, there was some more stuff that you noticed that was like, oh, the X Files just like really is these guys. No, maybe I was thinking of Twin Peaks. The detail with the so Twin Peaks is fucking uh, the same story. As that like mythical version of BTK. How is it BTK? Which tour? Oh shit! Right, the thing I outlined in the video about how it was Native American, like the uh, like Native American past trauma. It, it comes up a whole bunch in both the Twin Peaks show and the like extended law. Yeah, we were like, uh, which is like okay, the book so that I was reading at the start of the video. Clearly, Twin Peaks was like directly inspired by specifically BTK. Right. Right. <laughs> There are also things that are like inspired by other famous serial killers, like the Green River Killer. I won't go into it; it's gross detail. But there's an inspiration that is right. common to Silence of the Lambs, Twin Peaks, and it comes from the Green River, Green River Killer. Anyway, there was another one that I oh Men in Black. We forgot to talk about Men in Black, but also Men in Black. But Men oh, in Black's yeah. really like an extension of X Files, isn't it? Yeah, but it absolutely is that thing where it's like, where it's like, this has only been made because the FBI is suddenly sexy. The FBI mm -hmm. is suddenly sexy because of serial killers. And so, like, you can treat it as de facto serial killer fiction just because of that. So glad you pointed out how much of an absolute weirdo Thomas Harris is because that dude gets too much credit. Yeah, when, when you read Hannibal especially, the one with Margot Verger in it, you're just like, so he's a chaser. Right? So Thomas Harris, you're just reading it and you're like, okay, so Thomas Harris is a chaser then. Like, you've already read fucking Silence of the Lambs and all, had all this weird shit and you're like, so Thomas Harris is like maybe a turf or something? He's like weirdly obsessed with, with like this idea of this like evil transsexual. And then you read Hannibal and it's just got Clarice Starling fucking speculating on this person's genitals. And you're just like, oh, okay, you're a chaser. Yeah. Got it. Fucking. Got it. Got it. Honestly, I was like, 
he's a chaser, isn't he? When you were telling me about this, I was like, okay, Thomas Harris is obviously a chaser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yeah. <laughs> um... When I read Hannibal, I was repulsed by his description of Margot. It's really fucking annoying because, like, I don't know if this is just me, but when there are characters who I can understand them as being, they're clearly this thing. So Mar the Margot, the example would be, that's clearly a transmasculine person, right? Once I get over that hurdle, I'm often able to just enjoy a character a lot more. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm often able to just go, no, I like them. They're, they're, you know and just enjoy what's going on with the character. And ultimately, I ended up quite liking the character of Margot, and that's entirely divorced from my feelings about Thomas Harris, who I think is a repulsive little shitheel. I think he's a little fucking creep. But like, Margot, I thought that was a fun character. I just thought there were lots of good scenes I enjoyed a lot. Anyway. Um, got a bit buried before, but I really appreciate the DID being Named directly and not mislabeled as MPD, since I find it very overlooked in such discussions and it was heartwarming to see people getting more awareness of what DID is. You're welcome, no worries. Um, Wait till you do one on Split. Jo yeah, I might do I might do one about I Met Shyamalan. Um, John Douglas mentions MPD and then he's like, and nowadays it's called Dissociative Identity Disorder. Anyway, multiple personality disorder is, and it's like, fuck you, man. Fucking, fuck off. Um, <laughs> it's so fucking annoying. Um, yeah, anyway, it's just, it's just, he's an annoying dude in a bunch of ways. Um, some more venting on my part. He ends out every book. I've read like four of his books now. Every book ends with him advocating the death penalty. And it's just like, there's no good fucking arguments for the death penalty. If you're arguing that these guys are not, uh, like, don't contribute to society, okay, well now you're making it a eugenics argument, you know? Like, now it's a useless eaters thing. Well, if you're arguing that they're some sort of, like, uh, 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 pure evil, then it's like, okay, Douglas, how would you feel about a serial killer who exclusively killed Nazis? But he wouldn't though. It's no. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just so fucking silly. And then he he in the... it's just you can't, it can't amount to any more than oh, but it makes me feel bad that they still exist. And it's like well, it was like that thing, thing, you know. Yeah, he to to argue to argue it. He just played someone a tape of 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 a rape a rape torture murder, played them a, an audio t recording, and that. That, that that person was just instantly like, well, now I support the death penalty. And it's like, yeah. that's not an argument. Like, that's... It's like, you don't... <laughs> you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to disagree that someone is a disgusting, heinous piece of shit who is, like, a danger to society to not want to make someone a murderer. Well, it's especially weird because For of no that. It's especially weird because of that quote from Killer Across the Table that I thought was really good, where he said closure is mm. a word that all exactly. survivors of murder victims find useless and bad, and they don't want to hear it. And like, I was like, okay, this is a pretty emotionally mature approach to this kind of stuff. Actually, like, he he actually gets it quite well. Like, he um. Yeah, he, he get he gets it then. And then he goes and advocates for the death penalty and it's like, okay, so I know you're not you can't be arguing this based on closure because you But that is all it is. But it is really. He wants it to be over. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite annoying. Um so 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 so. That was Monster Man episode one. If you want to see how we made the title sequence, which was all original footage that we filmed hey. ourselves, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash curiovids and give us $2 or more than $2. And I made a behind the scenes video explaining it. Um, also, also what else while I'm doing, while I'm doing things? Oh, 
also this dress is pink, not orange. <laughs> no, that's not really that worth saying, but I just it's just annoying to me. I'm just looking at the close-up on, on screen and it's like, this camera warps colours so fucking weirdly. Anyway, the thing I was going to say was that was episode one. There are some more episodes coming up. We're gonna... Um, gonna do... Vampires next? No, not that. Not, not next. Hannibal, Hannibal next. next. Yep. Vampires, superheroes, and why they've become fascist. Um, terrorism. Uh, maybe the Shape of Water as well. But they won't be all in order. There'll be other things in between. Mm-hmm. Okay. Vampire the vampire. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna play some Going Under. Oh shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you get are you kidding me with this? You're yawning right now? So we'll watch out for any comments people wanna you hear anything about the Like as in the boys. The boys will come up. The boys will definitely come up. Hated season one. Season two will be a big focus of the essay. Um, um, We are going to read some posts. If you have any comments about the video, just let me know. Um, And we'll watch out for them and and chat about the video more. Happy to chat about the video more for the rest of the stream. Alright, let's do it. You got some posts for me? I do indeed. Or do you want to... Do you want to play first, or do you want to read first? Uh, I'm gonna read first. I'm gonna pee first. No, I need to pee as well. What? You could have gone before the stream started. I was watching the video before the stream you started. You could have said, wait and don't start the stream yet, I need to pee. Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I'm gonna pee. Oh, leg went dead under me. Huh? No! No, this sucks! Oh, piss. I'll leave you a time. No, I'm here all on my own! I'm gonna go down the big slide. You're all gonna watch me go down the big slide right now. Uh, while Soph's gone, I'm gonna tell everyone... Oh, fuck, what have I done? No! Uh, I also have a YouTube channel that released a video today that I've made with my friend and my sibling uh, called Next Slide Please. That's the name of the channel. Go check it out. Today's video was all about eels. It's got a lot of different eels. Any kind of eel you can think of is probably in the video. Uh, Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Eels and PowerPoint presentations. It's all good. Oh yeah, <laughs> and he's saying where I reveal my nature as a book criminal um, because I accidentally stole a book. Well, accident, I just you know, didn't give it back. Stole a book from my biology teacher, but you know, it was a good book, I enjoyed it, so I'm sure he's not too mad. Book crimes. Yeah, that's me.
Wi-Fi. What does that do? Oh, look, and by the way, uh, my next presentation, uh, the next episode of Next Slide Please, next Friday, is my presentation uh, on St. Bridget, who you were telling us about in the Discord the other day. <laughs> I just thought that was so cool. <laughs> so now I've done a presentation on it. Badly pronouncing, I'm sure, all of the Irish place and people names so please feel free to mock my pronunciations in the comments <laughs> see how fast i was i'm done that was so fast look at that i was so fast hey everyone all right you said you have to be yes all right you go do it then we'll start the posting the postening I named this one, uh, a post a day keeps Johnny Douglas away. <sighs> All right. I don't know if I stare too deeply into the void, the void might stare back. Stare too deeply into the posts. today, speaking of posting, I was posting today about being five months on estrogen, which is more or less true. It's like, a, it's, it's more on the less side. It's like a week. I guess it's another week. I'm going to be more strict about posting about my, um, my six months because that's kind of a bigger milestone. <laughs> but I don't know. I was just looking through some, some pictures, some selfies I tweeted out recently and I was like, you know, want to highlight this. Good way to highlight it is just to talk about how long I've been been on HRT for. I think it's going well. Uh, <laughs> eight days on estrogen. Cecil, I'm so excited for you. Uh, come back from defeat stronger than before. Hell yeah. Push my insurance covered HRT for NBs. Not no T for me, boo. Oh, I'm sorry. That sucks. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Congrats, Sophia. Can't wait to start HIT. Yeah, it's an exciting, exciting time. And when people say it's, uh, when people go around saying HRT is magic all the time, like, it really doesn't feel emotionally true. And then you, like, try it yourself and you're like, this is magic. Like, <laughs> you're just like, um, my body transformed. Uh, overnight changed shape. <laughs> not like, not like all the changes were overnight, but like, you know, each night there's like a little, almost imperceptible change. You're like, what the fuck? And then after a little while, you're like, what the fuck? It's really, really changed. It's a cool time. Anyway. I am, as always, talking about HRT. <laughs> as per usual. As per usual. I just can't get enough of talking about it. <laughs> uh, what do they give me? Sticks Road. Nah, I'll stick with Winkedin. Like, damn, living the dream. Um, 
<laughs> Growing titties good. <laughs> yeah. An exciting time, to be sure. Um, who's commenting just titties? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it classy, chat. At least say grats on the titties. Uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? Uh, <laughs> I've forgotten everything. <laughs> um, why don't you read me some posts? I'm going to. Someone, someone left a YouTube comment already, by the way. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have left YouTube comments already. But one person left a comment that I feel kind of implied they think it's a, that the whole series is going to be about serial killers. Right. And it's like, no. <laughs> um, I definitely will be coming back to mental illness more, because that's a, that really is a... Um, yeah, well, it's one of the primary methods of monsterification, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's why I'm considering doing one on, um, what's he called? M. Night Shyamalan. I've been considering that for a while. Because it's, it's just like, you know, this is fucked how... Yeah, you had like, been wanting to do something about him for ages and it's like, it fits in here better than anywhere else. Yeah, well it would probably be like a, a, a look at his work specifically, uh, but also just the demonization of the mentally ill in general. Because that's what his work is just like, just the whole fucking time and it's so fucking annoying like he just really cannot get enough of saying fuck mentally ill people it's really just or his like, like whole thing exotifying and fetishizing them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean sixth sense to a huge degree like even which is like one of his ones where you'd think it doesn't even come up but it's like the boy is seeing a, a therapist because the assumption is that him seeing dead people is right. a mental illness, and but then it's, it's like, just you know, him being special. Right. Um, <laughs> motherfucker, night Shyamalan. <laughs> That's what the M stands for. That's good. Um, but yeah, no, the series, if people aren't clear, as I said at the start of the video, is about why we tell monster stories, what they mean, where they come from, you know. Um, it's semi-inspired by a meme that I am, like, quite sure on reflection was meant to be anti-Semitic, um, <laughs> that I saw on 4chan about, like, a decade and a half ago, um, <laughs> which was, like, which was, like, this fucking, like, don't you wonder why all these monsters have pale skin and long noses and lurk in the shadows and, like, describing like it was this it was this fucking like ridiculous thing that feels very much like um a tumblr creepypasta on, on on you know uh on some levels it was this person trying to be like all the monsters have some shared features when you think about it and doesn't that make you think it comes from somewhere and like when i think back on it i'm like i am uh, like 40 to 60 percent sure this was like a like a like trying to get you to start thinking about anti-semitism um <laughs> and um um but nonetheless like the the creepypasta side of it the the non-racist side of it the creepypasta side of it is a compelling idea like if we if we if we like to keep telling vampire stories for example why where does that come from what why you know like there's a really interesting bit in i was saying this to nat the other day but like um uh one second dice to the omniscient i will reply to that um i was saying this to nat the other day but there's a great bit in the man from earth if, if people haven't seen that oh, it's one of my yeah. favorite movies i love that movie it's just like a play a really like it movie. all takes place just in one living room it's just this like sweet simple slow philosophical it's, conversation it's with so the whole good group i want to watch people. it again right now honestly what a special <laughs> little thing honestly he just so the so it's not really you don't really need to go in cold or whatever it's quite simple the guy's immortal and he's just he's just trying to convince his friends that that's the truth like he has lived forever and he's just trying to convince everyone that he's not lying about that yeah. but like you know he doesn't he doesn't do it in a sci-fi way he doesn't whip out a you know a fucking uh, original draft of the doomsday scroll or something a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> he just he just tells them about his life 
And like, that's even an addressed thing. They're like, don't you have any like artifacts that, you know, you can keep to prove this? And he's like, I never really thought of keeping them because why would you? Do you have things from when you were a kid? No, like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, but like, you know, over like a hundred lifetimes ago, it's like, you know. We keep some things. Yeah, of course, but it's like, it's a good point. You but know? if you've had a many, many millennia of life, right. you wouldn't be, you'd have nowhere to keep it all. And it's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite vampire stories because he's not a vampire to be clear, there's a simple note where he explains back when he was a caveman, when he was first living longer than, a, you know, not longer than a normal lifetime, he explains where vampire stories come from. It's because of him. They noticed that they all get, kept getting older and he didn't. And so they just figured he was probably stealing their life force away and they shunned him from the group. And that's just a, a cool idea. Like, I, I just I just find that really compelling. Like, you know, it's sad. Like, it's really sad for him. It's also just kind of like really interesting sociologically. Like this idea that they all see that they're suffering and he isn't. It must be his fault. Which like, you know, historically has precedent, speaking of anti-Semitism, when Jews weren't dying as much in the plague because of cleanliness practice, hygiene and cleanliness practices that they had, people kept insisting it was the Jews who were giving everyone the plague, which makes no sense because you give people diseases by having the disease, but right. hey ho. And the same thing about witches that when in a climate that was already, right. you know, deliberately crafted with a lot of misogyny towards working class women so that they could be disrupting peasant uprisings and they would see widows yeah. with children who were still looking healthy basically not starving because the widows have been like eating like slugs and shit right in order to survive <laughs> um, yeah because they'd been managing on foods that other people didn't consider food, basically, right. whilst they were suffering with like crop failures and stuff. Right. They'd be like, she's a witch. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like exactly, it's that kind of thing. Uh, the movie is called The Man From Earth. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies. I just think it's really, really neat. Uh, Content warning back to the serial killer topic, the misogyny in our society inevitably reducing serial killer's point is well supported by Gilles de Rey, the French serial killer who liked to kill children because he was a product of the French nobility that believed anything that the peasantry could offer to benefit him was his to take. Of course, eventually a noble would take that to the extreme of killing peasant children. Right. Exactly. It's like... Yeah, exactly. They, it's just like... They just choose people who are weaker than them. Well, it's just like... You and Mara said this, right? It's like, we all know they kill people who are... who are people who won't be missed or right. whatever. Maybe it's a fucking problem in society that there are people right. who won't be missed. Yeah. Like, maybe that's actually a fucking problem? Like, that's something that, like, you know, you don't see John E. Douglas point out, you know? he He's so willing to be, like these miserable pieces of shit with their disgusting impulse to kill or whatever and it's like yeah right. of course of course In the not same... disagreeing with that of course but like man don't you think it's kind of fucked up that like say go back to Jack the Ripper like he would kill sex workers why because no like and that's a fucked up thing is that no one was protecting them yeah it's like even in the show like you see uh, I think it's Ed Camper says to him the estimate that there's probably like 30 serial killers in LA and like people have made estimates that there was yeah dozens of serial killers in California at a certain right. period of time right and yet with like dozens and dozens of murders in Atlanta and then like they 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 think it just has to be the case that as soon as they found one person who's responsible for any of them, right. that that's enough to just say, oh, he did all of them. Which Wade, to be Wade clear, Williams, I need, I need, case, I, need case. To say, I need to say this. Like, if you've watched the show, you may remember 
the fucking... If you watch the show, you may remember the Georgia mayor shutting down the cases, right? And being like, and being like, okay, well, we've got a guy, so that's we'll, we'll close all the other cases now. And Holden Ford, who's meant to be John Douglas, going like, like being unsatisfied with that and being like, this isn't right. Not, not the real John Douglas. He's, the he's, real John he's Douglas. Very mild. He's like, hmm. I sure hope we got. The right guy. Well, it's like I he sure doesn't. Hope that's it. He doesn't say anything, and the families of the dead say to him, um, "You haven't solved the case. Like, you don't know that you've got the right guy." Uh, you know, and and then you see him looking doubtfully, being like, "Oh right. no, maybe they're right." He doesn't say anything. But to be clear, to be a hundred percent clear, that is worlds away from the real John Douglas, who is. 110% certain they got the right guy. Then they only have him on two of the murders. And when there is a fucking oh, white supremacist clan member who said he did it. Fuck. Like, fuck. Ugh. Fuck. The repeated thing that comes up is just like Douglas refusing to not refusing to, right? Not like anybody's put it to him, but just he won't. He won't bring it up. He won't acknowledge it. Point out the connection between serial killers and the police. Like, it's right. such an obvious right. fucking connection. And if you wanted to criminally profile, yeah. if you cared about psychological profiling and understanding why serial killers kill, right? Then the fact that so many fucking serial killers wanted to be police, like originally uh, as their career aspirations wanted to be police okay. that would be a significant thing it's like you said how many or were police or were soldiers how many you know serial killers go unnoticed because their murders are literally state sanctioned yeah that's that question gets more extreme when you when you think about his his book about joseph paul franklin the white supremacist serial killer because when you think about it you're like I'm not sure I would use the term serial killer because we right. always think of a serial killer as someone who doesn't kill for like, you know, an ideology. And then it's like, and then and then you're like, oh wait, no, but anyone who just kills people serially is a fucking serial killer. Right. And then you realize that actually there's no reason to not think of the other serial killers that way. There's no reason to not think of of, of Ed Kemper as a misogynist serial killer right, rather than just exactly. a serial killer in the same way that like Joseph Paul Franklin is a is a white supremacist serial killer Who's as well as a misogynist kills women. As, as well as misogynist of course uh, just, to, <laughs> just to be clear it's worth saying and saying again <laughs> I think um, it was Luminaries earlier was like saying yeah they think a lot about how we focus on serial killers but don't seem to give a shit about like the systemic ways that we enact violence on people to maintain power over them it's a good point and it's worth saying and i'm, I'm glad i've I'm, I'm glad i've gotten that video out now because like i've been interested in serial killer media for a long time like i loved hannibal when it first came the, the show i loved hannibal when it first came out and like you know i've always been super into this stuff so it's really good to revisit it personally for me and just go there are gaping holes in this right it's like son of sam was found because of a parking ticket right right they found a parking ticket that identified his car that matched the car that witnesses have described you know come on like come on like that's how serial killers generally get caught you know shit like this it's just like And like BTK, who arguably was one of was a big win for psychological profiling, like because Den because John Douglas told the Wichita cops that they needed to create a narrative of a super cop because the serial killer's ego would drive him to want to talk to someone who is like a super cop and therefore want to like come forward and confess. Arguably that helped, but like Ultimately, Raider was still just caught because he didn't understand how computers work and he asked the police, can I send you a computer disk with my letters on it? 
uh, and uh, like and and not be tracked by you, and they lied obviously and said, um, no, of course, go ahead. Like, right? And it's like that. You know, you can argue that the psychological profiling absolutely did a big big win there because of the super cop thing, but like also at the same time, you know, <laughs> like he also was like a sixty year old man who didn't know how computers work, so. Um, <laughs> Um, so, you know. They caught Jeffrey Dahmer and let him go with his victim. I'll never get over that. There's loads of shit like this. There's just, there's just fucking tons of shit like this. Ted Bundy, right? They fucking caught him. And then they let him, because he was a law, a law student, they let him, like, represent himself. And then while he said, he, when he said he was, like, reading up on the case. He escaped from the life. He just jumped out the fucking <laughs> window while he, while he was reading up on the case. Uh. Like... Oh God! Like, can you imagine? I, it's just so much of this shit. Yeah. Did you want to talk about the wire? Yes, I will talk about the wire. So, um, uh, Dyster, if you have a more specific question, I'm sorry, it's it's scrolled off screen now, but I'm happy to answer. Um, but I, as far as I remember, you just wanted to know what my thoughts were about the wire, and I think that it's a really good show in many many ways. Um. For one, for one, and I think uh, this is one that's kind of easy to overlook or forget, um, in terms of like mainstream network, network television, um, it made a huge leap in terms of people understanding um, AAVE. Like, there was a popular thing among Wire fans at the time that like, uh, you had to watch the first like four episodes to know if you liked it because it was such a radical shift in the... Uh, just basically understanding what characters are saying that you would need to you would need that time to get whether you were enjoying the show or not and like and that's pretty fucked um, <laughs> but like you know that's since then it's, it's been a, a, a big like uh, you know a big a big improvement in terms of how often like AAVE and local dialect and slang gets like shown in in television I think people it is easy to forget that that wasn't the wasn't the case people didn't that didn't get represented like when the bbc for example first started it was just like if you weren't speaking in rp english you just weren't allowed on and like that history of broadcasting absolutely carried over to Basically, america and everywhere like, like <laughs> if you're black in the u.s or scottish in the uk you get subtitles right exactly <laughs> exactly like, often as well, not even subtitles of what you're saying, just subtitles that says, speaking in thick accent. Mm. Mm. <laughs> like, so many times I've heard people who have, like, not even, not even, like, a Highlands, like, like, not even, like, a, a not even a thick accent, just, like, a Glaswegian accent. Edinburgh. I mean, Edinburgh would be a bit far, but, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Um... That was one thing, and I just wanted to I just wanted to 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 focus on it for a second because I genuinely think it, was, it is kind of a big deal. It can get overlooked, um, but um, it has its flaws. Like it does, obviously, hugely revolve around the cops for one thing. Like you know, uh, but then at the same time, it's a very it's a very interesting look at policing because uh, it does stuff to. Just thought about it because of the subplot about the serial killer in season five. It feels like it hits on some of the same marks as your video. Yeah, I, I just think it's like the way it looks at policing is interesting to me because at the same, uh, on the one hand, it's fundamentally always gonna be like a forgiving look at policing. Like if you look at, for example, the narrative about that younger cop who kills a, a black kid, and it starts like a fucking race riot in the city. And then it like it follows him on to the next season, and and like shows what he's doing after he can't work as a cop anymore. And it's like okay, so so first off, he got fired. Okay, we know from real life that's not true. Um, but secondly, you know, like it then shows him being like really really sympathetic and like he really regrets it and he feels so guilty and he's doing everything he can to like help out these kids he's like now working in a school like and like like helping out impoverished kids in in the neighborhood and whatever and, it, and it's just like 
yeah, you know, like, you know, <laughs> like, do I even have to say, like, there are some problems there, there are some problems in that representation. Um, on the other hand, as I say, there's a lot of really good stuff about it. Always enjoy a good bit of Dominic West. Put that shit right in my veins. Love me some Dominic West. He's the boy. Um, I just think he's a great actor. His performances and stuff is regularly, um, regularly great. Um, do you want to post? I do. I just want to go over a couple of comments I got. Mm -hmm since we're speaking about the video. I like this video. Some people argue behavioral profiling is bunk science and completely useless and other th others think it's helpful. I wonder what your thoughts on this are. I hope I was able to communicate this pretty well in the video. I think it's largely bunk science. <laughs> like, uh, and, and to be clear, no, in a tricky way, it's, it's similar to how like race science in, in like the bell curve like, can present you with a bunch of solid studies that don't have any problems with them, and overall create a picture of the world that's very wrong. So, the problem with criminal profiling, as I hope to have illustrated in the video, isn't a problem with its science itself, but the problem is that it is sold by people like Douglas as a like hook, line, and sinker, just full, complete package of the world. If you buy into this, you need to buy everything. If you buy into criminal profiling, you need to buy into the idea that we can understand and construct a mental model of the psyche of a killer, and then use that to catch them, and then they should face the death penalty. Like, he has it really end to end. He really has it like from their childhood right to their execution at his hands like he really has their whole life mapped out there and there's no no wiggle room really like having having i'm saying having read a few of his books now i really mean this is what he this is the way he d is about it so it's and not like the profiles themselves don't match up he's regularly fucking spot on about people when he hasn't yet caught them and like when he's profiling them and whatever right, right. He regularly he fully just like knows what what their deal is i think so for one example i think he knew btk did autoerotic asphyxiation right and that's a pretty deep cut like understanding his psyche okay the science of it is fine but like to call it bunk science is a it's a it's a tricky thing because I, I don't think the science is bad but i would call it bunk science in a way because of the way it's sold he does this he does a big degree of like anti-intellectualism in the books where he constantly goes back around to like how psychologists will tell you one thing but this is what you should really think and it's like that's interesting like what kind of thing right well he it's quite general that's the thing like he he does it when it's so okay so the it's first example i encountered himself against psychologist I would expect him to see himself as a kind of psychologist you would but he sees himself much more as a cop that makes sense right and that does seem like a flaw <laughs> yeah he has cop brain really bad um <laughs> so it's all or nothing that's the way he treats it but it isn't so that's my, that's basically my position on it uh it can actually be really useful and that's why I'm gonna bring it back in Episode. Chiara says psychologist here it's bunk a lot of the profiles are so vague they can apply to anyone and then confirmation bias takes over the rest confirmation bias is actually worth discussing as well my friend who has a criminology sociology degree was saying she like she really feels like that's one of the biggest things is like they're always profiling the guys they've already caught exactly that's what I was or making thinking. guesses that are like really quite easy it's such a small selection of people that it's like yeah it, it can't be all that scientific really well so this is where i'm, I'm trying to get to I, i'm trying to get to this look yeah there's a place where i think it's useful which is in the profiling of ideologically driven violent killers <laughs> which hey ho is most serial killers because they are ideologically misogynistic like if my point basically is, as long as you say it, as long a, a, a long, as long as you use it alongside an acknowledgement of like systemic problems, 
an ideology and bigoted, hateful ideology that like might drive someone, it can actually be very useful because you can seek out fucking communities and systemic uh, uh, like organizations and institutions that will help you catch people, right? It can be useful in that way. Um, take for example, right, the, the white supremacist guy. If you're able to psychologically profile him to the point that you could, you know, make an educated guess that he's probably someone who desperately desires radical action and therefore is bored of all of the groups, then you'd know not to just look for someone who was in all these groups like the KKK and the American Nazi Party, but to look for someone who entered them and then left them in sequence. And then you'd be able to find him like quite quickly if you were able to map that out, you know. Mm. Which is something, for example, that they didn't fucking do. I'm saying this is the this is the kind of thing that if you link that up, you would actually probably be able to find people and stop them from doing more fucking murders, you know. Or for that matter, it's useful in the study of de-radicalization if you can understand something that's ideologically driven. It generally follows a similar personality type. I do think that much is valid, right? Someone getting radicalized into a white supremacist, it's often a similar personality type, right? And it's, and then like where it starts being, where it starts being bunk is where you have like, these serial killers have overbearing dominant mothers and or absent fathers and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that in and of itself does not create a serial killer. They have to be in a climate, right, where everything is so fucking sexist that they see their mother being dominant as a problem and it fucks their brain up. Also, they're like, just like dominant mother, not like fucking... Like, that's the language they'll be using when they're describing like childhood abuse. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like traumatic childhood abuse. Yes. And they'll just describe it with overbearing mother. Yeah, it's fucked. As it, which is basically them putting out as if, as if it's just like a warning. Right, exactly. Right. That's what, yeah. Like, <laughs> don't be an overbearing mother or your son might turn out a serial killer or worse, gay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or the worst thing, a gay serial killer. Which is why we only tell stories about gay serial killers. Because uh, they're the worst ones. Um, it's funny my with how is... Hannibal, because I feel like him being bisexual is... At the specific time it was written, evidence of his power. Uh-huh. That's what I think. I think you're gonna give- I think you're getting close to giving away the, 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 the big thing about the Hannibal video. You're right, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you're like you're like this doesn't quite work if you view him as a serial killer but if you view him as you're right <laughs> we'll get that we'll get... <laughs> there's a big twist oh, in my Hannibal video <laughs> there's a big twist in my Hannibal video and it's good anyway um, <laughs> I think it's I think it's but I think there are like fair amounts of it that are bunk I shouldn't say that I think that, like the, the science you. is good that's a reductive statement I don't think like Thank the science is 100% good. They're like, if I was going through it with a highlighter, I'd absolutely like show you a ton of the book that was just like, see that? That's fucking nonsense. But like, I like he says there's himself, a fair it's amount like, of at it the where start they were just guessing and yeah. like... super excited for the Hannibal video. Thank you. Oh, thanks for thanks for subscribing, Abby Jones. Um, yeah, I just think it's like, like. The, I think the single biggest problem is that they are, is the package deal thing. It's just him trying to argue it as like a way to replace all of the things. He says at the start of... Is this the jet thing? Yeah. <laughs> he says at the start of oh, I guess. Killer's Shadow that in his ideal version of the BSU they would be like a rapid dispatch team with their own private jet, with like a forensic scientist and a, and a team of criminal profilers who would be fucking flown all around the country to wherever they were needed most, like the fucking Justice League. Because he thinks he deserves better than to be a weird nerd consultant in the basement. 
<laughs> he needs private jet for him and his team. So, so much. Yeah. Like, just getting a flight that's... Yeah. That's too much for him. Yeah, he's clearly insulted by it. Deserved he's back. clearly just, like, insulted by that's having That's why they to... have so many plane flights in the show. Right. Right. Because <laughs> he, he finds it abhorrent. Um, anyway, I think that the biggest problem is how it's applied, and then some of the science is bad. Just, just really like. I think liberalism is the biggest problem, and I, I, I've, this is the thing I've been yeah. suppressing is I've been trying not to say. I think liberalism, it's fucking liberalism. <laughs> like community psychology would be a very valid way to approach the problem of serial killers. Let's make a fucking society that doesn't produce fucking serial killers. God fucking damn it. It doesn't it's, make people vulnerable to serial killers. And doesn't make people vulnerable. Right, so many ways around that it could be changed. The thing could be fucking different. And instead it's just like, how do I get inside the mind of the killer? It's like, fuck you, man. That's not, that's just not it. Yeah. And meanwhile, serial killers are a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of the violence done to people on regular right. basis. I sincerely think like the John Douglas's mythos of like treating himself like he's a scary edgy knife boy because he likes serial killers has probably encouraged at least some serial killers to start killing. Like, I sincerely think because they admire the police, right? And the, ba the thin barrier is like they would love to become cops, which wouldn't be a good thing because then you've got a fucking potential serial killer who's a cop. And then all, 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 his, all his murders are just going to be state sanctioned. But they could but get the attention if they, of the best cop. But then if they, but if they, for whatever reason, fail to gain access to that, they become serial killers. And this is like a, a pattern you see over and over I again. I was thinking about that. Like, if he tells them repeatedly in his books that he's a lot like the serial killers then he's just like making that that line between serial killers and cops just like thinner and thinner. He's also telling them this is how serial killers behave and then they're reading his books. Yeah. Like uh, you said Jack Crawford in Hannibal yeah. was based on him. Yeah. And you also said when you're reading when you're listening to his book that BTK based some of his later crimes on, on Hannibal. Hannibal. Yeah. This yeah. weird like circular Thing. Like, it doesn't mean that they wouldn't kill if they didn't have these creative inspirations or whatever, but, like, just knowing that <laughs> you've reflexively, yeah. like... Fucking yeah. Also, like, uh, not just BTK, but Joseph Paul Franklin, by the way, guys, who, was, who named himself after Benjamin Franklin and Joseph Paul Goebbels, the Nazi propagandist. Sorry. Even worse than that, Paul Joseph Goebbels. Paul Joseph Goebbels. Anyway, um, so Joseph Paul Franklin wrote to Douglas from jail because he'd been reading his fucking book. Douglas has one fiction book called Obsession, where he has like some serial killers who are like model after real ones, but it's a fiction book. Right. And a minor plot detail of that book, like really minor. Uh, oh, that's what he made it out to be. It's just an incidental plot thing, right? Was, is, is a bit where some white women falsely accuse some black men of having raped them. Um, I mean, I don't know what fucking plot contrivance he has to have women falsely accusing men of raping them, but whatever, because it's like really not a common thing at all. But whatever, well, for whatever reason, John Douglas history. had a had a reason to put it in anyway. <laughs> but the point is, the point is that they hadn't raped them, and this fucking guy wrote to Douglas from prison and was like, um, "You got that wrong in your book." He was like, "Those black guys," but he didn't say black guys. Uh, definitely would have, definitely did, like de in, in real life, absolutely right. would have, um, 
and if you want to and he like fucking wrote this letter saying like if you believe that's so true then why don't you let your daughter hang around with a bunch of black guys but he didn't say black guys and see what happens to her yeah which is just like look at the fucking level of of, of fucking entitlement that this guy feels to Douglas's time he's like yeah man I can just fucking write to him give him a little a little uh, creative writing note <laughs> next time remember um, those those n words they did it that's how you write a better book for me to enjoy next time <laughs> just like <laughs> oh god wait there's a lot to process here right it's it's a it's a lot there's a lot going on there there's a lot going on I believe it's what the kids would call a yikes. Tiny thing that we can spy at a time in the diaries. Yeah, yeah, I was writing about that earlier. Oh, God. And he was inspired by Charles fucking Manson. Apparently because Charles real fucking Manson is a white was a white fucking supremacist. He was a fucking Nazi who tattooed the swastika on his forehead. Fucking God! That's what I was gonna say as well. The guy who inspired the Turner Diaries was inspired by Charles Manson, but Douglas's conclusion about Charles Manson is that he was just kidding. Right. It was just a meme, bro. <laughs> also, it was just a meme. Douglas interviewed Franklin before the Atlanta child murders. Years before. So for him to just come and flatly say serial killers don't kill across racial lines, like it doesn't make any sense. And there was like a range of like ages of the victims and stuff, just like Right. And the two and the two people that um Wayne Williams was actually convicted of killing were uh, adults. Well le right. legal adults anyway, like you know, you're talking about yeah. But like adults. Yeah. And it's just like so so you know. Do you want some posts? Manson is merely the rarest Pepe. Pepe Manson. Um, why don't you hit me with those posts? Okay. So, Parker the Storyteller. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Who I've seen in the chat sent me uh, this dumpster fire I think deserves to be read on the post stream. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Hey, Andrew. Andrew sent me a post too. Sweet. <laughs> Am I the asshole for calling my wife abusive after she fed our sons a spicy dish? Uh, yes. Unless the spicy dish oh, oh. caused serious medical damage to the children. Okay, this post was deleted by the months. <gasps> Um, Can you not read it anymore? No. No! It's because... So I knew this had happened. This this happened in between Parker sending this to me and me reading it. Um, the person commented underneath that it was fake. Ah. Basically, they'd written up a post from the perspective of a white guy whose South Asian wife uh, liked to, you know... Get, ha, uh -huh. was constantly having to make two separate meals uh -huh. for her and her daughter and the husband and the boys who the husband treated differently to the daughter and insisted that they needed special white person food and then he was calling her abusive for trying to encourage the sons to eat the food that she was But making. it's fake. But it's fake because this person was so frustrated by seeing this over and over again with friends and family that she wanted to like get feedback from the internet to be like, yeah, that's bullshit. So it's kind of fake. Yeah. So it's like based on a real story, huh? Yeah. Okay. Interesting start to posting by not reading me a post. <laughs> a little creative. <laughs> Interesting kick off to the stream. A little creative fiction for you there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting that someone did it anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, well, since Andrew's here, I'm going to read Andrew's post. Woo! Oh. 
worried that I'd made, made it up for a second and that Andrew had sent me a post for like last week's stream and <laughs> I'd just gone. Oh yeah, I was hoping Graham would be at this one because this is like funeral home related. <laughs> oh shit, okay. And I was like, yeah, I wouldn't hit Graham's the thing. Well, I know Andy's here, so. Yeah, please. Andy, if you get, get to Graham, Graham to come watch. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole for showing a girl her grandmother's dead body? Um. Hmm. Any bets? What relation does OP have to the girl? Uh, she works in the funeral home. <laughs> Hmm. Um, oh, we got a yes. I'm gonna say, don't do that. Okay. That's my hot take. Don't do that. Let's find out. Okay, I'll try to make this short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Me, 24F. I've been working at this funeral home. That's a real home. bra moment. Me, 24F. I've been working at this funeral home mm -hmm. ever since I got my degree. Ah, the lost Paul sister. Uh, <laughs> So about six months. So I'm fairly new. Mm -hmm. I do everything from funeral planning, embalming, hair and makeup, etc. Wow. I got a death call at 1.30 a.m. that a lady was that was on hospice had passed away. When I went to go pick up the body from the home, the entire family was there. The 18-year-old granddaughter came up to me and said she was in she was in cosmetology school and she wants to be the one to do her grandmother's hair and makeup. Okay, not the asshole. Very sweet. Quite simply, not the asshole. She asked not just to see it, but she had like a purpose. Mm -hmm. And 18 as well, like a girl. I, I thought we were talking about like a six year old girl. Full grown um, adult. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, not full, not yeah. full grown, but like. Halfway. <laughs> you know. um, okay. I thought that was sweet but about two years ago the funeral home i worked at changed their policy and you have to have at least a license to do that mm. not my call and not my decision that's just the rules so i told her that very nicely and she stormed off okay anyway the next day the family came into the funeral home to make arrangements mm -hmm. the family told me i don't need to, <laughs> i don't need to be heartless and let the girl do her grandmother's makeup <laughs> Hang on a second, hang on a second. Okay, but like, so is it the funeral home? No, it isn't though, is it? It isn't though. It's the family who end up calling her the asshole for showing her the body. It's absolutely the family, isn't it? It's the family though, isn't it? Mm, okay, okay, carry on. <laughs> Again, I told them the rules and I'm not the boss. I told them to ask my boss and they did. He told them the same thing. Well, the day that I was set to get the body ready for the funeral, the granddaughter comes back and demands I let her in the room with me to do the makeup. Very cool. I told her she could watch and maybe <coughs> give me oh. bless you. Thank you. And maybe give me some pointers on how her grandmother liked to wear her makeup. She still had an attitude but said, "Okay." Before we went into the room, I warned her. I told her her grandmother passed 2 days ago. It's oh. not going to look pretty, and if she can't handle that, she can step out of the room. <laughs> yeah. Well, I walked her into the room where her grandmother was and, she, and started to get ready. This is when all hell broke loose. She started screaming at me because her grandmother didn't look her, like her grandmother. Yeah, um, yep. I wanted to say, well, bitch, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you would have been the asshole. <laughs> Frankly, then you would have been the asshole. But she didn't. But I still had my customer service talk and tried to calm her down. Mm -hmm. She stormed out and said I was an idiot for not warning her, which I literally did. Her family is upset that I showed her, but they were totally on board about the granddaughter going in the room with me. So, am I the asshole here? No. No, clearly not. Very obviously not. Could not possibly have done anything more. Tried your fucking hardest <laughs> to avert this situation. Just no. <laughs> Clearly not. Damn. <laughs> like, like, damn. <laughs> yeah, no. No, absolutely not. Ugh. 
Yeah, well, that was a post. Yeah. That was a pretty good post. Mm -hmm. I think so. I'll, uh, I'll rate that th three posties. That's my new posting system. Three whole posties? Yeah. Are you not worried about posty inflation right now? No, because it's out of 50. Oh, well. I then do I even want those? Do you not? I can take it back. Okay, I'm taking the Mac then, I guess. No! You know. oh, oh, so you want? Oh, okay, so you do want. Okay. okay. <laughs> Andrew, oh yeah, I got that three whole posties. <laughs> three dead <laughs> grannies out of five. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, here's, an, here's one which is a bit stressful, but sure. Okay. Is this another submission? No, I just came across this one. Okay. Um, unless someone did send it to me and I've forgotten, in which case I'm very sorry, please tell me now. <laughs> um, well, at work I had an anxiety attack. Aww. I was overstressed, it felt like there were too many people around me. Oh shit, I'm missing. Fuck, I'm missing part of this. No. Fuck. Like legit sucks what's happening here right now in this game. Oh my god, this sucks. I can't believe I'm missing the other half of this post. I can't believe that either, that's fucked up. I can't believe you've done this. for getting my co-worker demoted for trying to pull me out of an anxiety attack. <laughs> uh, I mean, it depends whether you... Oh wait, you've... Ah! Uh, what? This one's been deleted too. No! Fuck. Oh, shit. I don't know why if it was the person who posted it. I don't know. Uh-huh. What is it? Yeah, they they removed it. Um, basically, like uh, his coworker, she was really touchy and kept giving everyone massages and kept telling her to stop. And then at one point, he had like he had he had severe pain as well. Yeah. So she was like, Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay. And he had a panic attack, and she insisted on like trying to like hug him out a bit or something and he was like begging her to like get the fuck off and she got demoted yeah um, uh, not the asshole good yeah you know yeah <laughs> uh yeah but his co-workers were calling him an asshole they are wrong about yeah. that mm -hmm. he is not the asshole yeah rated not the asshole yeah i give it two posties it would be higher, but you didn't have the post. Yeah, it's, you mean, just didn't have the post for me right really now. Really, only deserves tea. <laughs> Self-punishing. <laughs> Punished now. Um, shall I post? read you my four submissions this week? I've got another one. I thought you had three. That was three just now. That was one that I found. Oh, okay. Shit. All right. Well, I've actually got three submissions and one I found as well, so it's actually... Noise. Same deal. Okay, hit Noise. me with that. Hit me with. So this is a submission. Yes. From who? From Molly, that chib, uh, chibiest. Chibiest. Okay. I don't understand, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand. I've been my my understanding has been elevated. I feel like I've grown eyes on the inside. Hey, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Am I the asshole for leaving my husband in the grocery store because he started acting like a toddler? No. Let's go. <laughs> this is gonna be one of those this is gonna be one of those sever murder vibes, isn't it? Uh, I think it's just a, probably just a sever sever vibe. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
Wait, is that like a two-way thing? You're saying it's like seva seva, or are you saying? No, I'm just mean seva seva. It's just not quite exactly a murder kind no. of situation. When she says acting like a toddler, she literally means acting like a toddler. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Yeah, no, let's not ha like having it. Let's have it. No, let's have it. Yeah, because I mean, that's the thing. If he was crying or something, and he was upset, and he was having a, an anxiety attack or something, I'd obviously be like, that's not cool. But I assume she. Okay. Anyway. Just to remind everyone, our scale uh, for when relationships posts repeatedly, frequently, as they regularly do, involve a garbage partner who should go in the bin. The scale is sever, murder, midsummer. <laughs> we all go through phases and pick up annoying habits. Uh -huh. Sometimes we just need our loved ones to gently tell us if we've picked up a particularly egregious habit. Okay. Sometime in the last year, my husband has Started picked up a habit- pooping in his pants in the grocery store. Where he talks like a baby. No. <laughs> At first, it was funny, but it's passed into embarrassing, cringeworthy behavior quickly. <laughs> and I started reading this, so I was like, oh, is this gonna be too mean? Yeah, I mean, I like talking like a baby sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta be baby but also there's a line <laughs> exactly age play exists as a kink okay but that's not where to... i was going at all <laughs> i just meant it's nice to be baby I... right no i think uh <laughs> silver wolf is on it um examples doggo papa woofer subwoofer pibble hootie boy peepo burb Meow meow, Sammy, sandwiches, Sammy Wammy, chicken nuggies. <laughs> we call them chicken nuggies sometimes. Chicky tendies, adding a toddler esque list to words, and ones that, and the ones that get really gross are childish euphemisms for genitalia or sex. My wife weft me at the grocery store. Yeah. I cannot emphasize this enough. It's not endearing or sexy to have my husband talk about my boobies and his wiener and weenie and wee wee, oh. hoo ha's and oh. the jingos. Nostalgia for scrubs be damned. Fuck. We have not had sex for six months because he cannot stop talking about my boobies and it makes me sick. Valid. <laughs> As the recent uh, owner of some boobies, boobies is like the worst word. <laughs> like, it's not hot. It's just, it's just bad. It's just bad. Fellas, it's bad. Don't do it. Just before the pandemic hit. Remember, it's not just about how you feel about the word. You're describing someone's body. So it matters how they feel about the word. Exactly. It matters how you're making them feel exactly. about their own body. Like. And I, again, as the recent, <laughs> I nearly said purchaser. Um, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't purchased my boobies. Um, you know, as the recent owner of some big old titties. Big old titties. <laughs> some titties. Um, I, I, yeah, boobies? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. That's a nope a -roo. It's a big old nope from me. This is not, in fact, it, chief. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the derail. People have I mean, it was still own, on topic, but. People have their own preferences. Different strokes for different folks, however. Rule, rule of thumb, though, never say boobies <laughs> in, in your life. <laughs> however, you are talking to someone, it's a conversation with someone. And it's and about their body. And if it's about their body, they get to tell you if they don't like it, and right. you get to stop. Right. It's basically, it's, it's, it's to a point where it's like weird to me that boobs and boobies have proliferated as words for breasts at all because they're such bad words I just it's just it's just bad 
just before the pandemic hit, we were out at a restaurant with some friends. He must understand, though, that, like, that's why they haven't had sex in six months, though. Surely. I think she's told him. Just before the pandemic hit, we were out at a restaurant with some friends. He actually ordered a chicky sammy. Like, that exact phrase, chicky sammy. Well, that's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> some of this, I'm like, okay, king, though. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's because totally I, fine. I would not feel have the confidence to order a chicky Sammy in public, and that's pretty cute. <laughs> like... Look, it's totally fine that he ordered the chicken sandwich. That's not the issue. Our friends noticed the baby yeah, talk because it. he insisted on continuing the joke and even started talking with this god awful toddler lilt accent. After that, I just couldn't stomach the idea of going out with him to adult places. I'd go out to the brewery with his with friends. Really hate all the slang words for breasts, actually, but I also hate saying breasts. Same. <laughs> it does. Speaking of chicken, like it's breasts is something a chicken has. It's just yeah. like. Uh... You only. S oh yeah. shit! My controller. No. I feel like you only see breasts in a, in an erotic context written down. Never said. Yeah, I think it works in a yeah, in like a in a written erotica kind of way. Mm -hmm, that works. But not like out loud. Thing. But yeah, it's just like if you're hearing somebody, somebody talk to you like that. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm. Breast has some very people saying females energy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's absolutely true. This is just a, a titty stream. Yeah. I guess I've achieved my dream of being a titty streamer after all. <laughs> Uh, Watch it, Twitch will kick you off. Yeah, I know, exactly. I've got to be careful. Um, God forbid he join me and say, me want another beer or something. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. I don't know why he's doing this. I finally hit my limit when we were grocery shopping and everything seemed normal and fine until he gasped like a kid, ran to the ice cream section and jumped up and down yelling, ice cream, ice cream, I want chocolate. I was this mortified. This guy's gotta stop. This is that's that's you gotta stop, man. I was mortified. People were staring at him and me. He kept he kept going and kept saying, "Can we get popsicles?" I'm just enjoying my <laughs> baby talk now, though. Maybe I'm gonna like do this stuff. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no. I hope everyone's enjoying Natalie's last posting stream. <laughs> uh, she won't be on the channel from now on. <laughs> Um, but me won't post. Mm -mm, I actually hate it. <laughs> no more. Sincerely, <laughs> please no more. And I just said, either talk to me like an adult or I'm leaving. He started saying, oh, you must be fun at parties. Lighten up, will you? And shit like that. She hasn't fucked you in six months. Oh. You cannot be doing this. You, you have not had fucking sex in six months because of this shit. And when she tells you to stop, you just tell her she's being a fucking killjoy? What? Jesus Christ. I... Oh, God. I <laughs> Sorry just for said, yelling. fuck it, and left the store, leaving him to walk home. Like a mile, it was fine, because I couldn't even look at him. Since then, things have been very tense, and he keeps telling me that he wants an apology for embarrassing him by Sorry, leaving him in the store. <laughs> <laughs> I told Ugh. him that people don't get to demand apologies. If someone wants to apologize, it's up to them, and I'm absolutely not going to apologize for saving myself the embarrassment of a 35-year-old man with a mortgage re and retirement account asking for chocolate ice cream. Who allowed men to go out in public, honestly. <laughs> we just need a matriarchy. We just need men to not be allowed out in public unless they're accompanied. I think that would make this problem worse. <laughs> <laughs> because, wait for it. Oh, God. He got his fucking mum involved. No joke. She keeps telling me it's just a phase and that he's probably bored and I should be happy this is his midlife crisis rather than him fucking 19 year olds at the local bar sever murder cool high bar midsummer that one just went <laughs> i was it was you were right it was a sever that that shit just jumped two ranks easily that might invent a new rank that is fucked up your mom can't be ringing up your wife being like 
you should just be glad he's uh, not cheating on you. You should just you should be glad my my fucking creep son is not like oh god fucking damn it. I'm not I'm not kink shaming to be clear. I don't believe this to be a sexual thing. I'm just I'm I'm calling him a creep because of him fucking not not right not respecting not respecting when she was like don't do that. Don't do that. She's yeah. Right. To be clear, just to be clear. Yeah. I'm going crazy. Am I the asshole? Do I really just need to let my husband continuously embarrass me like this? Edit. Sorry, there was only so much space. I have talked to him multiple times, especially right. about the sexual comments. I've made it extremely, abundantly clear that him using terms like boobies, wee wee, are absolutely repulsive to me. Among he calls other his dick his wee wee. He says. Fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. Oh, that sucks so much. Oh, God. And then some questions like, Info, does he have a job? Yes, and he has. Completely normal as far as I know. He worked from home for a while during lockdown. Well, I hope he's talking talk about like boobies or wee wee in his with. job. Does he do it with friends? Sometimes, and it's generally meant to annoy them or gross them out, but he stops. He has friends where they think it's cute to embarrass each other. Right. When his friends ask him to stop, he stops. The problem exactly. here, the problem here is not baby talk. The problem is hating your fucking wife and not viewing her as a human being, but as an extension of yourself. Right. Who is allowed to tolerate whatever you decide she's allowed to tolerate. Mm -hmm. Is this a kink slash fetish? If so, I'm absolutely done. <laughs> I mean, whatever, yeah. If That's she's, <laughs> Has he seen a doctor? No, but I've asked him if he needed to talk to someone because he was acting strange and he accused me of being stuck up and judgmental. Oh god, Given... if she doesn't like the fucking joke, just stop doing the joke, yeah. man. Fuck! Given that he doesn't act like this with his co-workers or his family and only jokes around with his friends, only jokes around with his friends, I'm willing to bet that this is an indication he's trying to force this fetish on me non-consensually or trying to get me to leave. So she does feel that it's a fetish. I think so, yeah. Hmm. I don't... I'm not... I, I There's a sex terms thing, I guess. Just the boobies stuff, yeah. No, whatever. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Looking through the comments and stuff, it looks like she's uh, feeling supported and um, kind of rallying herself to have a bit of an ultimatum kind of chat with him. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh. uh, it's the mom thing, though. It's the. It's the. It's the fucking, like, getting his mom to. I, that's I hate that. Yeah. It it was it's just the it's the mum thing more than anything else. Like just his mum telling her that he could be being an abusive husband. He could be fucking near children. Oh god. It's oh like, god. It's just you know so it's disgusting. okay for people to break up for any goddamn reason they like. They just don't want to be together. They don't want to be if together. You don't anymore. want to be like relationships are consent based, and if you don't want to be in the relationship anymore, you just don't have to. If she's There's feeling no cringingly reason. miserable around this guy because of his constant baby right. talk, that's legit. That's up to her. Fuck this shit. Fuck that. <coughs> oh no. <coughs> oh no, I got coronavirus from that post. Oh god. Oh god, that guy's behavior was so despicable I've got coronavirus. <coughs> That's all your posts, isn't it? Yeah, that's all my posts. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, Chibis wanted to know what their postie score. Oh, hmm. For that one, minus two posties. What? No, that was like a f five posties. Oh, that was good. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a solid five posties out of 50. 
the the scale goes so high not because that because these posts have been bad but just because the scale goes really high like don't be ashamed of a five posty score like oh, it's, 50. it's just that you yeah it's just, it's just that it of posts a range. it's just the posts can be really good it that's is all. no sexy potato that's true that's right that's a special the thing one. it's like it's like cum shirts i would call that a 45 posties post andrew thinks that's a 50. <laughs> right but I think it, yeah. just because something is the, the best the we've peak. experienced so far doesn't mean that it's the top of the scale i can the conceive i can conceive of a better post than cum shirts even if i haven't seen it or and couldn't couldn't write it myself you know lorcan says 40 cum shirts and 10 <coughs> kiss bottles out of 50 and uh laura lola says what about pee bottles <laughs> uh, Laura Lola. You know, it's been a little while. It's been a little while. What if after my sub after my submissions this week, Andrew came back and read the cum shirts didn't help post again. I wasn't thinking Andrew this week. Although Andrew, if you'd like to come on next week and uh, and and with some pre prepared posts, say five or six that you've prepared and wanted to do to five or six yeah that's loads i never we, have five or six we usually read about five or six each each, each time okay <laughs> but i'll still be reading them joe read uh six okay okay andrew if you'd like Pick to come what? on next week uh select five or six posts and um yeah you can you can join in uh how about i read the cum shirts post the best post we've ever experienced again after my submissions. Would we like that? Would we like that, Queens and Queens and Kings? Would that be good? Laura, I think that would be good. Laura Lola, it's up to you. Right. True. So much power in your hands right now. Everyone just needs to know this one. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that's what's happened. Um, okay. Let me just go to the store real quick because I've got a coupon <laughs> deal Laura says I need that TBH <laughs> I read that with the energy of like it's been one of those weeks I need the cum shirts Tiny says cum shirts cum shirts cum shirts <laughs> hell yeah okay alright I'll, I'll do it I'll do it but I've got four posts to get through first and they're all pretty good I think they're pretty soft but you can you know you, oh, you, you gotta rate them Oh shit! Well, you're the you're the you're the receiver. You're catching those posts. Power in my hands. Right. <laughs> you rate the posts, so you, know, you can tell me. Um, I just want to get to the fucking the shop first, so I can. God damn shit! I'm gonna die instead because it's big boy. Look at him. Um. Oh, shit! 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 No. No, no. Oh my god. Pray the store. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna quickly just shoplift this. Yes, hot sauce. I'm gonna turn all the prices down. I'm gonna restore some health. I'm gonna restore some more health. I'm gonna get um occasionally freeze enemies you focus on. Hell yeah. Okay, and now you're taking over. I've equipped you quite well. So don't fuck up. Don't fuck up now. Okay. Am I going backwards or the right way? Don't be going backwards. That's a bad idea. Um. All right. Who's ready for some posts? Because it it is posting time. It's post o'clock. Posts. 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 Okay. Who submitted the Who submitted the gay dad one? I think it was Lorcan. No. Shit. My dad, 50M, is obsessed with gay men. Keeps bringing them up randomly in conversations. I'm sorry if this post doesn't belong in this sub. I just don't know where to post it. But I think this might be the right sub for it. It's in our such relationships. I'm 25M, and my dad is constantly bringing up gay men in conversations 
randomly. Random stuff like, I saw two gay men today. <laughs> I saw two dudes kissing today. They were gay. This is quotes. And we were all like, okay. It seems just super random. <laughs> He also jokes a lot about being boyfriends with his 40s M co-worker. He also showed me a gif of two gay men in their marriage and tells me, look, gay men can marry now. And I'm like, okay? <laughs> because it just comes out of nowhere. And he also showed me a gif of two gay older men hunting and he told me, did you know not all gay men are flamboyant? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> IDK, it's just kind of random. I wonder why he does this. TLDR, dad keeps bringing up gay men randomly for no reason. <laughs> um, I actually think I found this one in the thread. This is one I found rather than had submitted, I uh -huh. think. Are there any comments under it? Yes. Oh no, sorry, the thing I was thinking of from the thread is actually the comments, so it might still have been a submission. I just can't remember. Okay, um, okay. Comment. Are you gay without your dad's knowledge, or is your dad gay without your knowledge? Right. It's probably one of the two. The dad, OP. Th the dad could think that he's gay and be trying to, like... OP. I'm gay and no one knows, but I'm not flamboyant. I do weights and fake interest in women That's all. What he's saying. So there's Did no you reason son? to Did believe you know? I am. Oh my goodness. And I don't. That's and IDK so... about him being gay, even though he doesn't ever talk about women. I don't think he's gay. And someone replied, "I think you may be overestimating how good you are at hiding it." <laughs> Like, oh, you gotta roll, you are on fire. Up, it's such a sweet post, and it's like such a good punchline at the same time. Because it's just like, just OP, OP is just like, no one knows. OP is but, so confident no one knows, he didn't mention it in the original post. Right, but the commenter knew that. They just knew, they were like, okay, so is it you or your dad then? It's one of the two. The dad is a fucking king, though. I mean, seriously. Bless. What a lovely guy. Um, That's so sweet. I hope he comes out to him because of the comments. Well, I hope he comes out to him because his dad is... Because yeah, of his like, dad trying really hard to get him to come out. Over, like, an extended period of time. <laughs> I definitely, when I read it the first time, I definitely, definitely read it as the dad being gay and wanting to like lay the groundwork with like, see, you can be not flamboyant. Right. It turns out he was saying, he was saying, I get it. You're not flamboyant, but that's okay. Like, I want you to know I'll be okay. It's such a lovely post. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I think it's a really good one because of, it's like, so what's your rating? 10. Love it. It was a good post. It was a good post. I nailed it. That's right. That's right. I'm the queen of the night. I'm the queen of the night. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We're carrying on on a theme. Harker the storyteller sent me this post. We're carrying on on a theme. I, 22F, want to ask out a lesbian, 23F. But she knows I'm straight. Brackets, I'm not. I'm questioning. <laughs> the theme is gay people, but, um... You know. <laughs> it's not quite continuing the same vibe. The vibe hasn't quite... Alright. Folks, is it gay for two women to date? Hey everyone, this post is about the situation I'm living right now. I'll start by saying I'm a 22 year old questioning straight girl. My roommate has a friend who often comes to our place to study with her. I just gotta say- She has to be the most beautiful, elegant, classy girl I've ever seen. If you are building yourself up to ask someone out, just drop the questioning. Just say, like I, as a person who's 
also attracted to women, don't particularly want to date someone who describes themselves as questioning. Like, right. totally fine if you aren't experienced, if you're not really sure of yourself, totally fine. But like, questioning, hetero, flexible, like, heterocurious, whatever. And, and although this isn't the case in this it. post, if you're talking about trans people, infinitely worse. If you were, if you were, if, <laughs> you know, if you're, right, infinitely worse. Get over that one. But I'm sure, like, by the time that she would sort of actually ask her out, she would hopefully stop describing herself as, like... At first I thought it was a platonic girl crush. Turns out it, it is a real crush. <laughs> My friend is straight, though, so I haven't felt comfortable enough to talk to her about this. My friend told me that this girl is a lesbian, and she often asks about me, how I'm doing, and etc. She apparently also wanted to know if I am straight, to which my friend said, yes. She never asked me directly. She did tell me that I was beautiful, and she also told this to my friend when they were alone. Sadly, we don't interact much because, of the the, because most of the time she leaves as soon as they're done studying. She's always super cute and polite when we do see each other. We also had dinner sometimes together at our place. I want to ask her out. We follow each other on Instagram. She followed me, brackets, she followed me first. So I was thinking to simply, oh, sorry to simply DM her and ask her how she's doing and if she wants to grab a coffee sometime. Yeah, do it. Or would it be more appropriate to ask her in person when I see her? Also, I do have a little fear because she is out as a lesbian and has been since she was 15, brackets, at least on Instagram. <gasps> Instagram stalking. Going back to 15. Unbelievable. And I am a confused straighty in that sense. No, you're not. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What I am I even supposed to say on a possible date? That's just a dating problem. That's not a gay yeah. problem. Yeah, I am momentarily sexually confused and you're the first girl I ever noticed in that way. I mean, should I? What if she thinks it's weird or worse? I've read many posts on here of lesbians being tired and fed up with straight girls who use them to experiment or play games, IDK. Yes. So don't say those things. And why has she read those posts? So don't say that. <laughs> like you can tell like tell someone that you're not super experienced or whatever like it's good for people to know but yeah that's don't fine. describe yourself as straight questioning don't <laughs> you know <laughs> don't say that you just want to date someone so that you can figure something out about yourself like just you know date someone because you want to date someone you're to be honest in my intention isn't to experiment I like her. That's I genuinely think I like this person and want to get to know her. I'm just worried that she won't see past the straight girl wasting my time stereotype. See, this is just, just such. Don't describe yourself this as is a straight such girl and then you're like all textbook good. baby queer panic. Yeah. Like this is such fucking textbook shit. Just like, God fucking damn it. God fucking damn. Ugh. Seeing that this place is, uh, seeing this is a place for girls who like girls, I think this is, oh, hang on, no, this is relationship advice, whatever. Could you Safix give me some advice on how to approach the whole situation? Was this cross-posted? Yeah. It wasn't, but <laughs> whatever. Um, would you personally want to get to know and or date a girl who is just figuring her sexuality out? What would she have to do to make you understand she isn't using you in any way. Also on a possible date, how should I make her understand I am not there in a friendship kind of way as soon as possible. Seeing that my friend told her I am straight, I think she will look at my invite as a friendly thing and I don't want that. Um, First as much all, as people- start posting about being gay yeah, on Instagram. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just as being like, damn women are hot. Just a few times. If she's already been asking your friend about you, she'll right. see it. She'll as notice. much as people, <laughs> as much as people don't want to be messed around, they also will not care that they've been told you were straight before. If you ask them to go for coffee sometime, right? Like, <laughs> it's not, huh? right? It's like. <laughs> 
Like, you'll just ask someone to go for coffee sometime, and then it's like... Huh? Tim Allen... Tim the Toolman Taylor noise? Which I believe is how lesbians call people. Especially each other. if it's like, you know, it's probably In my experience. pretty young people. Like, people know that they. <laughs> people. <laughs> so many people. That's just... how I actually got an athlete on the first time. They were never hmm. versions of someone else. You remember I sent you a, a Facebook message with a voice recording where I went, <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't remember. And you were like, okay, the date is on. I'll see you at the Korean restaurant in 15 minutes. And then you were 45 minutes. I was like... Jamie says, take dad's advice, tell her about how women can be in relationships and they don't even have to be flamboyant. <laughs> Just posting on Instagram. Saw two women kissing today. They were gay. <laughs> I'm gonna tweet that right now. <laughs> I'm just gonna tweet. Saw two women kissing today. They were gay. Um... I'm, I'm How glad. did you like that post? I loved that post. It was very sweet. Um, I'm and glad relatable content. Yes. Right. I'm glad that she was there to ask for advice because I'm sure people would have been very helpful in just being like, it's all okay, just don't describe yourself as straight. Right. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> just incredibly <laughs> obviously, actually, yeah. Um... Andrew wants to know, Nat, how are the mushrooms? Oh, the f um, they went very, like, soggy. I, so I've seen other people, like, pickling things, talking about how, I can't remember what it was they put in it, but they'll put stuff, other stuff, to keep things crunchy, like pickled garlic. And you didn't and stuff do that. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends on the kind of thing it is, like, uh -huh. but... So I feel like if I were to do it again, maybe I would do that. Um, but so they're they're quite soft. So I think, but it's very flavorful. Literally, like the brine. Once it's kind of uh, where the brine had like leaked out and then evaporated off, mm -hmm. it smelt exactly like Marmite. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Oh, that's what I was telling you, and it tasted like Marmite too. I hate Marmite, so. But it's 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 good flavorful. Stuff, even if you're just putting in stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do with it is like blend it into something for flavor with the brine as well. Rather than just like eat the pickled mushrooms or whatever. I'm also making pickled kale. And I gotta say, it smells terrible. <laughs> it smells incredibly bad. I keep telling Natalie to throw it out. But I actually tasted a bit of it. Full disclosure, it, it smells like there's a like dead body. Sewage, like, it it's smells bad. like there's just like, <laughs> like filtered bin juice to like filter to get the worst smell. Right, that is what it smells like. Okay. But I actually like braved it and tasted a little bit of it, and it's very like olivey or like, like those sort of stuffed vine leaves you can get in brine. Uh -huh. It tastes a lot like that. So I'm like, that's good flavor. That's quite nice. So I'm I'm kind of keen to find out what I can use it for. Oh, it was Poppycock who, who submitted the gay dad. The the, the supportive hey. dad of the gay guy. Sweet. Right. Yeah, I, Andrew, I think I, I think it basically is the yeast and extract that makes it taste like Marmite because it's this like yeasty environment and then it all gets evaporated off and that's what was left. Mm -hmm. And it was like this black liquid as well. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, wait, one, one more second. I have the third post slash submission and I'm not quite sure which. Okay, um, I'm just going to go pee first. Aww. Aww. Aww, man. What am I supposed 
through now, right? All right, let's read some comments. Let's read some comments. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Let's tell Sophie that that makeup is good today. Let's do that. Let's everyone do that right now. Okay, let's read some comments. Let's read some comments. It's comment reading time. Okay, really good video. God, it's fucking wild the amount of serial killer media that never says one word about misogyny and the point you made about blaming their moms. God, so satisfying to hear someone else talk about this. Thank you. <laughs> I get this kind of comments quite often um, that are just like, thank you for saying this. It's quite, a, it's quite, quite regular. Don't mind me waiting for a mention of criminal minds. You'll be waiting a long fucking time. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Your makeup is looking actually so good. I'm very jealous. Thank you so much. Um, great vid as always, but Manson episode was directed by Andrew Dominic, the assassination of Jesse James by uh, what? Not Fincher. Uh huh. That doesn't diminish my point. Um, <laughs> I was, wait I was writing an already too long video about a similar topic, and now I have too many thoughts. Thanks a lot, YouTube channel Curio. <laughs> okay, well, you're welcome. Your content has brought me a lot of happiness. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Um, I never heard Son of Sam was in the military, and like, damn, that actually explains a lot, and you're right. There's more... Oh, my bad. Oh, excuse me. There's more people out there do, who are doing that and being state sanctioned and so no one is putting the patterns of behavior together. Right, exactly. 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 I also think, by the way, my makeup and dress coordination is is on point. I'm just I'm just moving straight on to complimenting myself. I'm, I'm cutting out the middleman here. I'm, I'm cutting out the simps. There's no need for you anymore. <laughs> I just think I look good today, that's all. I'm just really enjoying this look. Um, um, thanks for putting words on weird sentiments I had while watching Mindhunters. That's good. But it's technically called Mindhunter, singular. Um, da -da -da -do. This one just says true. 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a heart because it's true. <laughs> yeah. Nietzsche, aren't we all kind of scary edgy knife boys? <laughs> right. Um, that was that comment that I read out earlier asking if uh, it's bunk science. Complicated answer. Return true, nice. If The Bureau by Gerard Way isn't in this video, I'm gonna riot. What do you want from me? Like, okay. <laughs> I hate comments like that. <laughs> Cause it's like, either I've mentioned it, and then I'm like, yeah, well it is. Or I haven't, and then I'm like, well, enjoy rioting, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Where's the riot? Someone said, if the Bureau by Gerard Way isn't in this video, I'm gonna riot. And I was just saying, I always hate comments like that because either I have mentioned the thing you're talking about, in which case, or I haven't, in which case, it's just like. Yeah, it's also like the SPD in, in that it's just like a repetition of the same things that you're- SCP. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's also, it's like, it's really any comment that tries to predict what my videos are gonna be before watching. Like, any time anyone does that, it's such an annoying thing to do. I constantly have people who hear the topic I'll be discussing and f try to predict the, f the entirety of my take, like the whole of my script. And it's like, okay, well don't watch the video then, bye. Fucking, bye 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 then. You don't need to be engaging with my content. You don't need to be commenting here. You don't, you don't need me, since you're so clever. <laughs> you can just leave, you're done already. Right, it's just so Why annoying. Why you make your own video? 
It's just so annoying, though. I just gen It's just genuinely really fucking annoying. Um, Give me that post. I will. Uh, now is the time for posts. It's the time for posting. It's the time for I hate what you're doing right now. This is awful. Somebody I don't like this at all. I might get that Hollywood reference. I, it's, uh, I hope they don't. No, we're best friends. Oh! So we were best friends. We are, but we're a different kind of best friend based on Hollywood. <laughs> um, you rated the other posts which were sweet and wholesome and gay. Mm -hmm. You rated them quite highly. I don't think I rated the previous one. We'll rate the previous one. But you said you were enjoying it. Seven. Okay. They're doing pretty well. <sighs> what have you done? What's, go what's going on right now? <laughs> okay. Girl 22F, I'm 22M, dating is perfect, but uh -huh. convinced she's a reincarnated African slave from the 1800s, so much so she claims to relate to African -ish American issues today. Too weird to look past? Do you think that's too weird? Do you think that's weird? Look, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just scrolling. Bruh, play the game! Yeah. This sounds like a Chappelle bit, right? Right, right, right. <sighs> Alright, you ready to settle into this post? Dig your teeth in? I don't know if I can ever really be ready. I don't know if ready as all I can be. I think that's a very fair assessment. Okay. I put perfect in quotes to make the title short. Oh shit, I got good. Yeah. It's you know you can focus on them, right? Oh. Oh. Oh shit. That makes things easier. Yeah. Why wasn't I doing that? I put perfect in quotes in the title to make the title short, which is not perfect, but really, really great after a few months at least. <laughs> after a few months. This is OP, OP between the title and the first line of the post. Is in he's in such free fall in the relationship right now that between the title and the the first line of the post, he was like, "She's nice." I think he already knows. I think he's desperately trying to find a reason to make it okay, and it's not okay. It's not okay. Okay. She is 100% that she was a slave who was kidnapped from Africa and wor worked a plantation in the South until she was killed by the plantation owner's son to hide a sexual assault and pregnancy. I try to judge her for this, I want to believe- I think it's meant to be- I, I try not to judge her for this. I want to believe in aliens and ghosts, brackets, but don't really. So I, I know people want to believe in stuff that makes the world a little more odd than it is. 
when it when it becomes weird is that the uh she really takes on African American issues as if they are her own. I mean, it's one thing to support BLM, but she actually will say things like, "This has never gotten better since we were forced to be here." She's never said things like this in public, but some of her Instagram posts get really close to saying, "I'm one of you." My mom really likes her brackets, which is rare. Well, she doesn't know, does she? <laughs> like, discount that, right? Or just disregard that. If you're counting, my mum likes her as a as a as a a point in her favor. Disregard that. Your mum doesn't know she thinks she's a reincarnated African slave. <laughs> I should have read the rest of the sentence first. Maybe she, oh, does she? My mum really likes her brackets, which is rare. And her advice is that my girlfriend will grow out of this. Um, kind of like astrology, but otherwise she's a really good person, so don't do anything drastic. I know this is reasonable, but I'm so afraid she's going to blurt out something stupid and get us beat up or ostracized. <laughs> what do you guys think about this? You know, pretty straightforward. Pretty much where, 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 went where it was gonna go. You got any thoughts on that? Well, it's just sad, isn't it? Because it's like, when this person's... It's more like, embarrassing than anything else, so it's like... Is there a way that you can just snap them out of it? Like... Personally, I had my reincarnated slave phase right after my baby talk phase. Yeah, I mean, children like children are typically interested in like one out of like space, uh, ancient Egypt, and dinosaurs. Right before they believe they're reincarnated African slaves, there's like a you know, it's like object permanence, right? Teething. I hadn't heard of that one. <laughs> I can't say I'd heard of that one before no? in child development. No. Okay. Oh. Well, you know, collecting, collecting is another phase. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's nice. That's nice for her. What would you rate that post? Six. I like the gay ones. <laughs> the gay one's really good. That was a good one, though. The gay dad one was my favorite one so far, I think, this, I don't know, on I'm this not, stream. I'm not rating relative to what you rated my ones, really. <laughs> I just think my ones were better than your ones. I just think my ones were the superior posts. The gay dad one. Yeah. And he was just like... That's undeniable. He was just like telling his son, like, you know, I saw two men today. Kissing. <laughs> so it's like they were gay. My dad's really weird. <laughs> I wonder if he's gay. He wasn't even wondering if he's gay. He was just like, "What's this? What is this about?" And and the fucking replies were like, "Yeah, he he's he's gay or you're gay. Wh which one is it?" And he was just like, "I'm gay, but he there's no way he knows." <laughs> well, clearly he does. <laughs> so fucking good. Clearly that's not true. <sighs> Uh, Tom Nicholas, for those who know Tom Nicholas, just left a comment on the video saying, this was cracking, which sounds very much like Tom, um, reminded me of when I watched the Unabomber series, brackets, the dramatized one, not the documentary, can't remember what it was called now, on Netflix, which came across as weirdly pro-Unabomber. <laughs> Everything described Always! Does. Always! To be fair, though... <laughs> <laughs> Um. Ba, 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 ba. People are just like, yeah, well, we are ruining the planet. Though. I mean, it's undeniable. Mm, I'm not gonna get in. I'm not gonna get sucked into a pro Unabomber thing. Um. There are better ways. <laughs> uh. 
you were complaining about this just earlier today. What? Like, well, complain the narrative of like. Fair, I don't know. My, there are better ways that are less radical. I I I don't know all that much about the world. He was just trying to save the planet. But was he killing like random people? Um. He was threatening to. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> mm. In this series, we'll investigate if the Unabomber had BDE. <laughs> uh, he'll steal something for you. Nice. Scheme. See, so you stole that. Hell yeah. You should go get some more money so you can get the one extra heart one. No, you wasted all your money. This one was submitted by our good friend, Lorcan. Try not saying Lorcan a different way. I don't like it. Um, don't do it again. Okay, <laughs> okay I won't. Um, I've laid my coat across my legs, but it kind of looks like funky trousers. Like if I just had like big woolly trousers, how weird would that be? I'm gonna look. At, I'm gonna look for some weird woolly trousers now. <laughs> um, am I the asshole for telling my mom I don't care about her opinion on my <laughs> blank wedding and uninviting her? Dog wedding? <laughs> Throw away as I am very active in many communities, of course. Of course. Of course she is. And don't want to be associated with this when I post in them. 25F, I met my fiance, 24M. At blank five years ago, when he. No, I should, I should, I should admit, I should give you that one. At Comic Con five years ago, when he was cosplaying blank and needed a blank for a photo, we're engaged and set to get married in November, brackets if Corona permits, RIP Fs in chat. Um, we're still huge blank nerds, and we decided to pay homage to that, as it was even how we met in our wedding. Nice, right? Right? Okay, what is it? I think that's nice. They met yeah. that way. Yeah. The bridesmaids and groomsmen in blank outfits. I'll be walking down the aisle to the... I'll be walking down the aisle to the blank rather than the bridal march. And we'll have a blank instead of a first dance, etc. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so pumped because I think it's a, uh, sincerely it sounds like a good idea. It's a Star Wars wedding. It's Star oh, okay, Wars. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay, uh, what was he dressed as? What Han Solo, and he, he needed was. a princess Leia for a photo, oh. and now they're engaged, and they're gonna, and they're gonna have a Star Wars wedding, and the bridesmaids oh, and groomsmen yeah. in Jedi outfits, and she'll be walking down the aisle to the Imperial March rather than the bridal yeah, march, and was... they're gonna have a lightsaber fight instead of a first dance. Nice. How cool is that? I love that. Hell yeah. <laughs> However, the rise of Skywalker was. Ass, and I don't know how you can still. <laughs> yeah, well, how you can just be right after the rise of Skywalker, you're like, Star Wars wedding. People can easily ignore that. <laughs> how quickly, people. how quickly we forget. Yeah. Um, no, that is cool though. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped for that wedding. That sounds great. I made a point not to take any money from my family members so they wouldn't get a say in who's invited slash what the wedding looks like because I expected some sort of protest. Right, that's fair. When we talk... Also, just, like, because... Because to some degree... Like, not just because you don't want the meddling, but also because you... You feel it would be kind of fair. You know, a lot of... A lot of... Right. 
a lot of the time people's families do still pay for weddings even today and like in that situation it is a little like <laughs> you would feel pretty weird being like but can I have a Star Wars one? <laughs> like, yeah. So, fine, fair, fair enough. Okay, legit. When we talked with our families and friends about it, everyone was mostly on board, especially my dad, who says this will be the best wedding he's ever attended. Oh, that's so cute. My mom was very involved with my brother's wedding, but seems to be showing no interest in mine, except for making snide comments on my choices. Aww. I love her, so that hurt. Aww. I asked her why she didn't want to be involved at my house during planning, and she said she felt I was, quote, disrespecting God's co God's holy covenant of marriage and ruining your special day by making it some weird joke. Boring as hell. God? Star Wars. <laughs> uh, and I should be more like my bro- Look, man. Speaking of BDE, right? If a, if a dude creates the fucking universe and can't handle- you making your wedding Star Wars themed? That's no god anyone should pray to. That's a baby man. That's an insecure little baby man. Who goes wah wah and poops his diaper. I mean, that is not a god anyone should pray to. You should not be using god as your fucking... Right? And then it's as for really the as for the it. ruining the special day, yeah. it's... Your special yeah, day, fine. not your mother's special day. <laughs> like, fuck! She's ruining it by fuck. not board. God created Star Wars, so it's fine. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so, making it some weird joke. And I should be more like my brother, who did a more traditional wedding, if I wanted her to be involved. I was upset. I told her I really wanted to include her in the festivities, but my fiance and I wouldn't change any of our plans because of what she said, and I don't care for her concept of a wedding. Then she lost it. She said that she had hoped once I talked to her about it, I'd realize what I was doing wrong. She threatened not to come to the wedding or let my or let my dad come either, and I was appalled. Oh, I snapped back at her. Yeah, I mean, her dad already said that he thinks it's the best wedding he's ever gonna like. He would have ever been to. He's not just excited because it's his kid. He's actively excited for the, just the event itself. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, I snapped back at her, if you refuse to be happy for me having the wedding of my dreams, then I refuse to invite you. She looked betrayed and left crying. My fiancé is 100% on my side, but a lot of my family is now saying that my wedding sounds stupid and I should have listened to my mom. My dad says I should have tried empathizing with my mom for her missing out on her dreams for her daughter. I'm conflicted. She's never disliked my fiancé, but now she's telling my family nasty things about how he ruined my wedding. I might have come off as too harsh, but I was jealous. My mom didn't seem to care about this huge deal in my life just because I had an unconventional theme. Even my dad, who is a huge fan of the plan, is saying I should have changed it up for my mom to be happy. My brother and sister-in-law say I owe it to my mom to give her the satisfaction of seeing her daughter at a perfect wedding. Am I the asshole for uninviting my mom because she didn't approve my wedding theme? That sucks. Like, she came straight in with the ultimatum to, like, change your wedding or I'll, like... When the ultimatum of, like, if you want me to help, then you need to do a different wedding, didn't work. Trash she changed mom. it up. She escalated it. That's a mom in the bin. 
That's a bin mum. And she was just so confident that she could like make her dad not come to her wedding. This is me scrunching that mum up in a little ball. Throwing her over there. Got a little basketball, one of those little no novelty basketball hoops over the bin. So it goes whoop. And I go. God, I bet you hate that so much. Anyway, <laughs> those were my posts. I hope you liked them. Yeah, they were good? Yeah. Alright. Like, they met at Comic Con? Like, come on. That's a spe that is a special thing. And they didn't just meet at Comic Con, like, being like Obi Wan and Shark T or something. They were Han Solo and Princess yeah. Leia. Like, that's perfect, you know? Alright. That's so annoying. <laughs> uh. Um. So, I'm now gonna just like, uh, scroll around the thread. And find some. I just remembered the water drinking problems. <laughs> posts. That we had last time. They were pretty good. That, those are posts I'd rate with like a, a, a 30 posties. Wow. Wow. My husband's water drinking problem? Yeah, no, that was That was wild. a great post. <laughs> it was so incredibly mundane, but it was just... Like... Come shirts, Lorcan is reminding us. Beef trainee. Alright, alright, alright. I, I did promise. I did promise. There was a promise of cum shirts. I did, I did promise. Um... You promised cum shirts. It's true. It's true. Almost every reply to my tweet has been maybe they were just really good friends. Um, <laughs> I should have seen coming, to be honest. Mm, okay. All right. As I'll be reading, tell me any time you want to, you know, add something in. You know, feel to feel free to jump in, to interject, to editorialize as you as you feel. This is the cum shirts post. I hope you're all ready. You aren't. Okay. My wife, 33F, found my, 37M, pee bottles and cum shirts in the attic, and I swear to God there is a really good explanation, but she refuses to speak a single word with me. This is the quintessential case of it's not what it looks like. It's not. It is what it looks like. <laughs> it's worth saying every time. TLDR. It's good that the t it's a, it, it, it's usually annoying when a TLDR is up front for the sake of reading a post out. Huh. In this one, very rare, rare level of quality of a post, it's actively great that it's up front. Having a little summary yeah, up front, yeah. wonderful, delicious, an aperitif, an amuse bouche, mmm. Yes, fantastic. They're letting you smell the wine before they bring you the whole bottle. Oh. TLDR. A minor medical condition causes me to pee a lot and using bottles made sense since it was impossible to leave my work from home desk sometimes. And my wife found them. Com shirts didn't help. Edit. Based off everyone's response, apparently the extenuating circumstances still don't make it make sense. And okay. now, the post. This obviously sounds completely insane, but here's the explanation. My wife and I are upper middle class professionals living in nice little in a nice little McMansion in suburbia, guillotine. 
My wife is a very nice and amazing all- My wife is very nice and amazing all round, but a bit uppity and is highly, highly concerned with appearances and what people think. Crazy, right? She's a dentist and I'm a software architect and business operations consultant who has worked out of my house for 12 years with my office being a custom add-on with its own attic. My wife has literally stepped into my office maybe six or seven times in those 12 years. Brackets, never even been up in the attic since construction being completed. As I treat my office, like driving to work, and when I'm at work, my wife should only show up to my office in an emergency or something very important. Otherwise, call or email. I have very minor prostatitis. I mean, fucking, if you're gonna say this, say it serious. Um, I have very minor prostatitis that she doesn't even know about, with the only real symptom being that I have a, I drink a ton of water and thus pee a ton. I often work 12 plus hours a day since my clients are all over the world and meetings routinely last three to four hours with no breaks. About 11 years ago, during one of these meetings, I literally pissed my pants. Because some of my Asian clients consider it extremely rude to excuse yourself even from a long meeting. After this happened, I started using my water bottles I drink from as my toilet to pee. So as to not arouse suspicion by my wife, I just bottled them up and threw them in the attic and would just take them to the dump on the weekend when she did one of her girlfriend outings that I knew she'd be gone for a while. The situation, babies and gentle them, is that he would be drinking from a minimum 500 milliliter bottle, several of these a day, peeing in the bottle, several of these a day, throwing them up in the attic, not literally throwing, and taking them to the dump at the weekend, right, while his wife did one of her girlfriend outings and he knew she'd be gone for a while. Big Tony says, as someone who has to pee a lot because of diabetes, I relate to the problem, but the solution is fucked. In 52 weeks out of the year, right, how many bottles a day are we saying? What was it you came to before? It was like, it was thousands. If we say it's a minimum of two bottles a day, that's a litre, a day. Five days a week, 52 weeks a year, okay, which is 260 litres per year. Now, you're thinking at this point in the post, why are you measuring it in years, Sophie? He <laughs> takes it to the dump at weekends. I ended up slacking on taking them out, where it got to the point that it's been years. Just like... It's been years. Why would you not just pour them into the toilet at the end of the day and throw them Years? Off? Plural. Minimum two years. Which means minimum 320 litres of piss. But it's actually more like 10 years, right? My salt, like my... My, I know this, I know this, just deep down inside. When he says, I ended up slacking, and it's wound up being years, I know so fucking certainly that he did it like once if ever, and in the 11 years he's been doing this, it's mostly just been going up there. Which means it's much more like 2,500 litres of piss. Who 
just talking about gallons of piss. And we're not even done! Okay. Um, <laughs> on top of this, I would occasionally, brackets, maybe like once every few months, masturbate and use an extra dress shirt from my closet to clean up. Again, using same logic, <laughs> I just threw them up in the attic with the intentions of removing them. Probably about 40 up there right now. Here's how we can do some maths. Here's how we can do a cheeky little Fermi calculation. Are you Why ready? Why a dress shirt? Are you ready for a cheeky little Fermi calculation? He said once every few months he generates a cum encrusted dress shirt to throw up in the attic. Now, now, being as generous as possible, i.e. determining he generates these 40 shirts as fast as possible, we read a few months to be on average two months, okay? Mm -hmm. Making it 80 months. Right? 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 Making it <laughs> seven years. Okay? Yeah, seven that's years! That's true, I hadn't thought of that. 260 times 7 is 1,820 litres of piss. Oh, and just 40 dress shirts covered in cum. And how much money worth of shirts is that? That's for like 40 times 40. You know, and you know he's getting like... He described himself as upper middle class. He described himself as living in a McMansion. Right, so they're not going to be like super cheap. No, they're expensive shirts. The real twist is, on, you know, this, the fifth, my fifth reading of this post, the cum shirts did, in fact, help me figure out mm -hmm. the true magnitude of this man's just, just deep, Deep sickness. <laughs> Just him hoarding, hoarding his gold like Smog the dragon. You just know he's got. He has a fetish for wasting expensive shirts, right? There was another post that Sh I read that was someone was like, I have a fetish for destroying expensive items. Mm. Mm -hmm. In sex play, like right. The more expensive, the better. Right. And they're like, this is a problem for me. <laughs> right. He's just like snot Rolexes didn't help. He's just like <laughs> yeah. he's just like my wife found my pee bottles, <laughs> cum covered shirts, hundred dollar bills I wiped my ass with, uh, a copy of the Magna Carta that I uh, just used to fucking pick my pick my fucking earwax out. This Friday, I had to go on site to a client about two hours away, so I drove there, did my work, and came back home. Apparently, one of my wife's friends bought a new house but can't move in until May, and has to be out of her house by next week, and needs a place to store a number of boxes that didn't fit in her storage unit. My wife offered that we could store them in my attic without mentioning. So whose fault is this really? One thousand eight hundred and twenty liters of piss. So Friday, my wife and a few of her friends I want you all to picture this, and I want you to picture this with just a Danny Elfman fucking score on this scene. I want you to picture the fucking pull cord that turns on the bare light bulb that flickers a little before it comes on steadily. You know? Look, it's the cool ass. <laughs> That's good. 
My wife and a few of her friends go to start putting boxes up there and are met with the piss bottles and cum shirts. Do not, my friends, become addicted to piss. The only thing she has said to me via text is that she's filing for divorce. Fuck, man. Ari Aster should direct the movie adaptation of this post. I agree. I think Ari Aster could make a wonderful post about a guy who's just like... You just watch it and you're like, God damn, this guy. By post, do you mean movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you watch this post. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything is post now. Yeah. Yeah. I want Ari Aster to do this and blur the line between post and movie. Permanently. It's gonna happen. Permanently ruined. It's gotta happen at some point, right? Just really, like, deep digging into, you know, in the same way that he wanted to write, like, a breakup movie, and then these Swedish investors were like, do us a horror film, so he was like, okay, I guess my breakup movie's a horror film now. Ari is just like, I read a Reddit post and I want to make a movie about it. <laughs> Uh, and it's just this guy who's just like increasingly just like obsessed with like hoarding his piss, you know. Yes. Only that's just a that's just a feature of it, you know. Mostly it's like a drama about these like weird rich people who live in suburbia. But then you know you know the okay for those who haven't seen Mid, uh, you know Midsummer Midsummer or Hereditary, you know the thing that happens in Hereditary, right? And like. You know, the sort of, like, the cult shit starts getting revealed in Midsommar, right? That sort of point in the movie, for each of those, after which in each of those movies, things are just batshit fucking crazy, like, from then onwards, it's the piss bottles, right? Nice. It's like, everything's just like a kind of slow-moving but tense, like, drama about these rich people who are, like, married but they fucking hate each other. You know, he goes to his uh, work from home office and she is not allowed in because it's like his, he treats it as driving to work and you have to call or email if you right. want to see him in the same house. And things are just like weird and tense, right? For the whole sort of first act, second act. And then she's taking some boxes upstairs to help out a friend, right? And it's just like, it's fucking madness from then on. It's just so fucking much. The thing in Hereditary can refer to so many moments. It's the the thing that happens after which the film is non-stop insanity. The thing that happens that you don't see coming and then everything is just awful from then on. I don't mean awful like the film is bad. I just mean I just mean unbearable. <laughs> anyway, com shirts didn't help. Um, how about you read me some posts? You good with that? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you're just gonna put the controller down. <laughs> <sighs> What else in the house do you think he's filled with piss? If he was smart enough to have the piss siphon off into anything else, he wouldn't have been in this predicament. He can have it siphon off into something else via a toilet. It's very simple. <laughs> Doesn't take any kind of intelligence. It's really quite easy. This summer. Piss house from he's, Ari Aster. He's had this like extension office built, you know, he's got, he's describing himself as upper middle class, like, you know, they've got a toilet attached to it, like. I think the rest of the movie, I mean, I, I think the abs, like, I think the, thir the third act madness is like, he goes full goblin mode after having his piss secret discovered, and he just like picks off the wife's friends one by one. All the witnesses to his like, to his like, grubby attic room have to die and so he's just like you know and he just goes full goblin mode it's just like <laughs> he goes full rat mode 
Tony says he has a very good movie trailer narrator voice. Thank you. I'll second that. <sighs> and it just like the the film in the same way that Hereditary and Midsommar end with like a character being kind of like okay with how fucked everything is like he he just like naked covered in blood and mud crawling along on his belly under the crawl space of his house just smile. right just like grinning because he loves it Got yeah he's his annoying wife is gonna leave him alone He's, he's like killed all her friends and he hasn't been able to find her, right? And he's like, and he's like, it seems like he's so concerned with like finding and killing her so that she won't tell anyone what he did. But what he really wants is just to be left alone. So he's crawling along on his belly just covered in just filth, right? Underneath the crawl space of the house, right? And then, it, and then his phone buzzes and he looks at it and we see the text that says, I am filing for divorce. And he just starts smiling. And that's the end of the movie. There we go. Because she's going to leave him alone. <laughs> he just wants to be left alone to, 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 jizz into, to jizz into expensive shirts and fill bottles with piss. <laughs> the movie ends with him making this post. Yeah, he like closes the text app, opens his Reddit app, and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> oh god. That's so much piss though. And just to be clear, just to just to be really clear here, the 40 dress shirts thing, I was being as generous as I possibly could. Right? He said, once every few months, okay? Okay? And I said, few means two on average. And we all know it doesn't. We all know it doesn't. It's basically ten years. It's for as long as he's described being yeah. in this situation. He's he's fully tipped his hand. He said about ten years ago. He's fully tipped his hand. I started doing this. And admitted to us that he actually never once fucking took it out to the dump. Like, this thing we all knew was true... It's true. It's com it's completely true. He never fucking once took those shirts to the dump. That was bullshit. Or bottles, for that matter. <sighs> what a posting good time. What a time to post. What a time to read posts. Truly magical. You know, part, his, his part of the, uh, his part of the weird, weird rich people drama in the first act. It's just him repeatedly, like, her calling him to do something. You know, dinner! And him going, oh, And then getting up to go to dinner. <laughs> he just really, really wants to be left alone, that's it. That's his, like, that's his character arc in the film. He wants to be fucking left alone. And finally he is. And all is well. There's like, like in the way that Ari Aster films go, you know, uh, where it's just, and it, it's, it's just like, it's not, um, it is just like almost boring, almost boring interpersonal drama. Like it's not just, it isn't boring, but it's just like, it's nothing particularly much is happening. You know, the end of, end of act one conflict is just him calling her mom by accident.
setting it up in act one there's just being you, you know there's just like a wordless scene where he goes up into the attic and we can't see why you know we don't see why we just see him coming up the stairs into the attic but like there's just like there's natural light on him but it's tinted yellow Laura Lola missed the post. I'm sorry. No! Shit! You'll have to watch the VOD. Damn it. That it was sucks. the whole production, you know? That sucks. I've just come across it organically in the thread again. That's very funny. <laughs> what are the people saying about it since we just read it? actually watch it yeah I mean also I keep a, an archive channel so you can also check out um, all the streams on there too if you want <clears throat> uh, you could have a couple of close calls where she almost finds it and multiple people he's murdered who have found it yeah. <laughs> right exactly exactly one of the games saying I can almost understand having to piss in a bottle because you aren't able to leave to use the bathroom and stuck without it for three to four hours if he had dumped it into the toilet and threw away the bottle as soon as the call was done yes yes the piss hoard is a way to hide pissing bottles makes no sense and, it's and why clearly... is he using dress shirts to clean up jizz that sounds goddamn expensive and it's clearly fucking inspired by something else there's something else going on there it's not what it looks like i say to my wife's friends as they discover hundreds if not thousands of pee bottles and 40 cummy dress shirts. It's for, it's, it's 1800 litres of piss. I'm... At least. Yeah. It is minimum 2000 litres of piss in my opinion. My humble opinion. Somewhere. Low balling here, it is 2000 litres of piss. What, do they disagree in the thread? Someone saying, holy hell, just doing the math on the cum shirts, that makes it like 15 years worth of cum shirts stored no, up there. No, 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 no. Once every it can't month, have been. It, got 40 it's, of them. It's, it's, it's maximum it's... 12 years is how long they've been in the house. Right, I, I think it's, yeah, basically as long as we've been doing I'm it. saying, I'm looking at the character motivation for this character in this movie I am writing now, and, right, why does he do that? Why does he make his living space as disgusting as possible. He wants to be left alone. I think he likes owning the space. It's not about being left alone. I think if yeah, he, he lived wants, alone, yes. he wouldn't feel the need to do that. I agree. That's why he'll smile at the end when he when he receives the text saying I'm filing for divorce. Because he knows he doesn't have to be a weird little piss goblin anymore. This solves all his problems if she just leaves. That's the last shot. He's smiling because he he because he knows. That's it. Okay, fixed. No worries. No worries then. She's leaving, so I'm fine. I'm fine then if she leaves because then, because then. Again, like a wordless scene, and this is like act one, you know? Like a wordless scene where it's like, it's like him masturbating, you know? And he takes a, he takes a dress shirt off the, a clean, right? A clean office attire, right? White shirt off the rack. So we know it's clean, right? And like, Dumps it on the floor next to him, just in a, in, a, in, a, in a graceless heap, right? And starts masturbating. And we, the audience, are just like, what? We're just like, what? You know? 
And then in the middle of it, you know, dinner. Brian, can I speak to you for a minute? Oh, <laughs> right. I'm making a good movie, I'm just saying. This movie is gonna be sick as hell. And I am gonna get Ari Aster to direct it. I'm gonna win an Oscar. <laughs> it's gonna win that it's gonna win Best Picture, I'm telling you right now. Bong Joon Ho should direct it because of Parasite. That's a good point. I like that idea too. Alternate alternate ending is like the family come out from the basement and kill him. could be a secret basement in the attic doesn't scratch the surface of his piss hoard. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, okay, you know what it is. So you've got like, uh, you've got like, uh, another one of these scenes where you don't know what he's doing, right? It's, it's like him going up into the attic. It's like him, uh, it's like the, it's like the scene of him masturbating in the dress shirts there. And you just don't, you go, what's that about, right? And it's like, it shows the wife's, the wife's kind of suspicion of him, like what's going on with him. It's a, it's a mysterious friend coming to the house. She's like watching, she's like twitching the curtain, watching, right? But this is like part of his business, right? She's not meant to interrupt in this, right? His friend pulls up in a black SUV. You know, they're talking about it. They're talking about something. Who knows? He's like scratching his chin. He's just not sure. Maybe, maybe. She's like, what? Oh, she, she, she wants to know what it is, you know? And then uh, he goes and looks in the, looks in the back of his friend's car. They're looking together at something, you know? But then the pot boils over, she has to look away, right? And then when she looks back, the car's shot. They've walked away, don't know where. Reveal at the end, or just before the end. He's storing all his friends' piss as well. No way. Five friends are all pissing and bringing it to his house to store in his massive basement piss tank. It's for it. Ritual. No, the well the ritual is the piss. It's one and the same. They just Here's they the just tree. all resent their wives and the way they all express this is to piss and keep the piss in his house. He who hates his wife the most. I've got a little sweet treat for everyone. Okay. This is one that we've read before. Probably haven't read on stream. Oh, that's pretty fun. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang uh, on. He does end up killing several of his friends as well. Because it's all, it naturally it's their wives who are his I wife's mean, friends. The contrast didn't help, right? As well. So. Maybe they don't have cum shirts. That's too far for them. 
Will I be the asshole if I complain to the owners of a cafe about how long it takes their employee to cut cheese? Do you know this one? I do. I think it's the goon that says no assholes here. <laughs> I work in an office building which has a cafe in it. It's not table service. You go up to the counter and have a choice of a hot meal, soup, or a sandwich. Uh -huh. The owners don't manage it as they are a catering company that supply the food in the morning. Yep. They leave the workers to deal with the distribution. Of can I just say, can I just say, this is a great post. I love this post. This is a wonderful post. He is a pleasant person and very talkative, and there is nothing particularly odd about him other than his apparent immunity to the passage of time itself. Me. <laughs> Big old me. That's true. That's completely just, true. I've worked in That's kind completely of jobs true. Well, I'm just like, yeah, no. This, I could never have like a long term job in this kind of thing because people get so annoyed at me. I literally, I, I was fired from working in a cafe when I was 16 because so they're just like, wow, what are you doing? <laughs> Immunity to the passage of time is the best turn of phrase to describe exactly what this guy and also you are exactly like. <laughs> uh, so good. He will not prep anything. There's no sandwiches assembled and waiting to go. There's an empty fridge bit next to the counter. The racks stand barren, devoid of even a glimpse of a BLT. Okay, so well, the sandwiches- Hang on, hang on. How's he supposed to prepare a BLT ahead of time? It takes a really long time. Well, like how you can have a few like obvious orders prepared ahead of time. <laughs> That's the book. <laughs> Okay, so the sandwiches are freshly prepared each time. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it's great. But he doesn't prep the ingredients either. He has to take out and cut <laughs> and cut these up every single time someone orders something, and he will take his time. <laughs> it's just like damn right he will because he's a king. Of time if you're making a sandwich at him. The man will cut cheese with the concentration of someone disassembling the Large Hadron Collider. And he does it on an order by order basis. Yes, yes, I love this post. I will explain his process. There will be a line of four people. The first will order a cheese panini. He will take out and cut open a yes. panini from the cupboard. Yes. He will open the fridge, King. take out the five kilogram block of cheese, Unwrap it, cut three slices with the aching determination of a man clinging to the last trace of his self control. Rewrap the cheese. Yes! Yes, he rewraps the cheese! I fucking and knew it! Yes! Cheese in the fridge. Yes! He will turn on the panini maker. It is not already on. <laughs> he will assemble the panini and put it in. He will wait 20 minutes. 20 minutes! <laughs> For the panini to cook. Oh my god! 20 minutes for a sandwich! <laughs> During which time he will this take. This is so you! This is exactly you! Even I would not be. No! Part of this, this is you! This is exactly how you are! This is you! This is. <laughs> During which time, he will start another order, multitasking, nice, and begin the same process of taking out, Regularly. and unwrapping, and slicing each ingredient before putting it away. Regularly, like when it's dinner time. If Natalie said she's, she's gonna make dinner, I'll like, be like, so when are you starting dinner how long do you think it's going to take it's at least half an hour longer than she says every single time half and a whole hour no guaranteed and then like yeah quite often a, a full extra hour or more there's more a than couple you say. of things i have down now so i'm like i know how long this takes and if it's and if it's like 8 p.m and we haven't had dinner and you and, and we haven't had dinner because i was expecting you to make dinner because you said you would <laughs> At that point, I just go, I'm going to make dinner. 
because like if it's 8 p.m. and you haven't started i don't leave it that late to it's start them, this yeah. has happened like five times in the last two months no i haven't started dinner after eight no you have not anything that's the point you haven't started I'm saying oh, right. it's got like five times in the last two months. It's gotten oh, to the yeah. time where I'm just like, so that's not happening. Yeah, yeah. So that's just not happening. Yeah. I mean, those are probably times where I've been like, yeah, I'm not gonna. Too late for me. 20 minutes for a panini. <laughs> <laughs> 20 minute panini. He will take out, open, serve from, Clothes and put away each box of salad in turn. Oh, what a king. He will boil a kettle with enough water for one tea. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, he will turn the machine off between paninis. <laughs> Lunch only lasts two hours. Yes. We've had clients visit who attempt to get lunch during meeting breaks, who return sandwichless with a thousand yard stare. When he runs out of something, he doesn't score it off the board. Last week, he ran out of all types of cheese. All week. He just kept explaining it to everyone individually. He pondered them. <laughs> all week. <laughs> all week, he was just like... And I love... I love to think, and I'm really sure this is true, that they went, do you have do you have the red Lester panini? He was like, no. We're out of red Lester. And they were like, do you have uh, another kind of... <laughs> he wanders about aimlessly like a Skyrim NPC in an inn. Insurmountable <laughs> tasks mounting in front of him. But he honestly seems to enjoy working there. Yes. It's like he just doesn't grasp the concept of pre-sliced cheese and well-timed so panini much. makers. I love this man I'm so much. I'm just like, much. oh, this job. I'm very endeared to this man because he's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I find this incredibly charming because he's literally you. We've mentioned how long it takes him, but he just sort of laughs and says... Ah, fresh food. Just cut the cheese! Please, just cut the cheese! <laughs> the reason he's running out of food is oh, the owner's... fresh food! <laughs> the reason he's running out of food is the owners aren't selling as much and they're adjusting their stock accordingly. There's a lot of demand, but the supply takes 30 minutes to toast a panini and spends it talking shit about how mild this winter is. Oh my god. It's honestly driving me insane, but still I feel like it'd be a dick move. It would be a dick move. This guy seems to be having an amazing time. And incredibly, the people selling the food and employing him just don't seem to give a shit, so... Like, yeah. I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy for him. It does sound like he's having a great time. Just bring a pack lunch. Cause of death posts. I did nearly die of posts. It's true. I need to experience this panini. Wouldn't that be incredible? Like, that's the real, like, food experience. Find this guy and taste his incredible panini. I don't think the panini is that good. But it'll be special because it's made with love. And I think it's literally not anything special. But it'll be special because it's in this post. It will not taste better. It will feel special. <laughs> Just cut the cheese. Ah, oh, fresh <laughs> Thank food. Thank you, Larkin. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, fresh food. <laughs> what a king, I love him so much. You can make everything However, I would like you to make dinner when you say you're gonna make dinner. Yeah, I do usually. <laughs> but I make dinner every time I say I'm gonna make dinner. <laughs> it's just because I'm getting used to having other things to do. <laughs> 
I know. <laughs> but now I don't bother pretending that I'm gonna be able to make dinner when I've got like a thing before. <laughs> Wow, it's nearly one already. We just had some good posts. And oh, is it time, really? wow. time flies when you're having good posts. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's special because you wait 30 minutes for it. 20 minutes for a fucking panini is a nightmare. Like, like what the fuck? That's, that's a nightmare. That's sincerely just fucked up. <clears throat> I'd say that's a. I forgot how joyful that post was. I I would say that's another. I'd say that's one that's like on par with gum shirts for me. Just like the cute vibe of it. Yeah, I do love that one. And I was getting a lot of joy from it just now. Yeah. yeah, got a lot of joy from it the first time I read it. It's a wonderful post. Classic. It is a classic. It deserves to be a classic. If break is two hours and panini is 20 minutes, that's like six paninis. For how, how big is the company? Uh, I give this post 30 minutes out of a two hour lunch. I love the, the idea of this guy making six paninis and going, damn, we're fucking slammed today. It's just this guy making six sandwiches. Just making six sandwiches and then going, whew! Whew, fuck. Lunch rush, how do I do it? Oh. Just going like, I amaze myself. asking my BF to stop making dick jokes. No. I am a 29F. BF is 33M. He so usually cracks a... So much of the, these posts are women asking if it's okay to not want a man to do a thing. That's my broad observation. It's just so much, so many posts is, is that exact thing. <sighs> he usually cracks a that's what she said joke several times a day for the past year. Cool. These I can handle. But he also throws in other crude and vulgar jokes, sometimes in front of his friends, which bothers me even more. I definitely have a sense of humour and love joking around with him, but I just think if I you're... definitely have a sense of humour. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh This gosh. guy doesn't that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. But I just next think... he's just next he's just next he's just going. Uh, I'm, all I'm saying is, if you hate dogs, you're sick. You're disturbed. The thing is, if you don't love dogs, you're seriously disturbed. But I just think, if you're all day, every day, saying dick jokes to your girlfriend, then you're kind of treating her like a bro, and I'm tired of it. <laughs> I'm not your mate. <laughs> yeah. Today I suggested we should go hiking with his mum to a place called Dripping Springs. And he said, yeah, let's all, go, let's all go to Dripping Dicks. I told him, please stop with the dick jokes already. And now he's upset and giving me the silent shit. Sorry, treatment. sorry. I feel like... He's older than her. I feel like... He's 33. Now, <clears throat> I've he's been... He's not 19, he's 33. I've been informed that OP has a sense of humour. And she described what the things he says as jokes. So in the chain here, what I'm seeing is, right? What I'm seeing is a boyfriend who makes jokes, I've been told. Right. Okay. A girlfriend who's writing faithfully what he says on Reddit. And then you reading it out to me. And, and yet what you said to me, it wasn't funny. So I assume it must be your delivery. Um, okay, do you want me to try again? Yeah, I mean, dripping dicks? There I must mean, be I a funny way of saying that. I as funny as I could. Like, 
I was trying to, I was, in, so, I was channeling like Rick from Rick and Morty. So the place is I was called. Like, yeah, let's all go to Dripping Dick. Well, Rick, I mean, Rick and Morty's funny as well, so that can't be the problem. So the place is called Dripping Springs. Okay, let me try again. Okay. Yeah, let's all go to Dripping Dicks. Is that better? Don't work. No, it's still not funny. Um, Dripping dicks. That's just that's not funny. So maybe she's probably lying about what he said. Probably. He probably said something funny. <laughs> because that wasn't funny. Like that was um, painful to hear, and uh, maybe the least funny thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, and probably the least funny thing you could say confronted with the name Dripping Springs, which is already pretty funny on its own. At least Dripping Dicks, like, there's something funny there. Uh, no. The I'm saying, I'm saying like, there is the zero comedic content in what has been said there. That is now un he's upset and entirely the unfunny. Treatment. I've already told him several times to, at a minimum, Reduce the number of dick jokes, but it seems like he's on a roll lately. If I eat hot nuts, peanuts, it's an invitation for a nuts in your mouth joke. Etc. I mean, to be fair, that yeah, yeah, you know, you're gonna eat hot nuts. But every time you eat nuts, yeah, it's terrible. Everything is that's an open invite for a dirty joke. That's an unlivable situation. Am I the asshole for not wanting to hear joke? Dick jokes are it all day. No. You just gotta phrase it. Don't phrase it like, stop making dick jokes. Phrase it like, up your fucking game, dude. Yeah, just explain to him that <laughs> nothing he's saying is funny. Repetitive. Let's go to dripping dicks. It's just what? nothing. You just, you just fucking take the name Dripping Springs and do something with it, you know? Ugh. Like it's just not funny at all. Fuck. 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 <clears throat> On a roll? <laughs> On a dick, more like. Right. That's the- exactly, that's the joke he made. Yeah. That's- that's the level of comedy we're operating on. <clears throat> Shit, what the hell? Nice. Ah, <sighs> cool. That's the level of dick we're operating on. Right. A funny, funny joke. I'll stop now, it's probably too funny anyway. <laughs> Yeah. You definitely should stop. By the way, I think it should be the last post because it is nearly 1am. Okay. Okay. 
I, 22 male, I'm 22 male, and over the last two weeks, my dad, though I'm sure trying to be helpful, has really gotten me angry to the point where I'm seriously contemplating removing him from my life altogether. Wow. If he says anything else the same way he has the past three times. The first one was two weeks ago when I had sent a group text to my mum, dad and older brother updating them on what was going on and that the trip I had planned on saving up to go on and take this girl to Japan for the Olympics was off because she said she was unable to take the offer. No, I didn't want pity and that shit from anyone. I told them I signed up for Foster now because that was my other plan uh-huh. and that I was starting the process. I Skyped with my dad later in the day after getting off work as he wanted to check up on me to make sure everything was good after the Olympics plan didn't work out. Uh I told him that I thought maybe her parents were not okay with her going and that was why she is 18. Uh He basically said that he was sure that it was... How old is Opie? 22. Okay. He basically said that he was sure that it was just too big of an adventure for her to want to go. Yeah, that first one is mild, but it was like he didn't need to say that. Both were spec... Very mild. <laughs> I'm very, I'm quite confused <laughs> at, this, at this at this juncture. That first one is mild, but it was like he didn't need to say that. Both were speculating, but yeah, he could and should have just left it at that and moved on. Oh man, man, what? I mean, that's trying to be reassuring, like. Yeah, what? <laughs> it's better than saying. Uh, yeah, yeah she it's probably a, hates it's me. a it's a bit weird that you're 22 taking an 18 year old to another country. There's a lot of worse stuff he could be saying, huh? Mm-hmm. Like... <clears throat> okay, alright. Uh, so that's number one, there are two more, okay. Again, a small issue... Oh, wait. Maybe this guy knows his dad and we don't know and, you know, like, we're gonna... We're gonna realise there was a sort of... A hint in that early behaviour from the other comments. But maybe this guy is... Picking up on vibes that are not there. Again, a small issue, but this was not the only thing. The second thing was when I brought up that I was thinking about, in the spring, starting to pay for a new car. New cars have double to triple the gas mileage that my 2009 Honda has, and they are safer and all that. Yeah. Considering I deliver food for a living, it would be pretty fucking important and helpful. I did not explain my reasoning to him, but he then said that I should just save up and wait until the car breaks down before buying a new one. Like, I didn't fucking ask for his advice. I was simply updating him on my plans. Because my family wants to stay so updated. he's your dad. <laughs> okay. Again, like... So, like I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. Maybe his dad's advice isn't helpful here, but it's, like, totally normal. Uh, my mum didn't have any fucking problem with the idea of getting a new car. She didn't mouth off about saving up and waiting till it is no longer drivable. But I digress. I'm gonna call John Douglas on this guy. Not to mention that this was right after. Almost... This guy needs to be stopped before he <laughs> before he starts. Not to mention that this was right after almost getting into a serious accident due, due to my uncleared off ramps, where I almost ended up with a total car oh. in the hospital with someone else dead. Almost, almost what? What? Again, I did not tell them that because no need to give my family stress, but yeah, this adds to the reason. So that was number two. I'm so fucking confused. Uh, okay. (sighs) I'm just so fucking confused. But almost. Almost what, though? So does that mean he didn't end up with a total car and he didn't end up in the hospital and he didn't end up with someone else dead? Did someone else die or not? I don't understand. I just don't understand. After almost getting into a serious accident. Yeah. Okay, so ending... he didn't get into a serious accident and none of that stuff happened. So... What he... a weird way to say so that. So he, he's saying... So he's saying... I could have killed someone. I didn't. I didn't tell my family. No reason to worry them. was I told him over Skype that I was getting the first house check slash orientation next Thursday for foster care, something that should be exciting. But he basically told me, you're not adopting right now, right? 
and started telling me I need to save up because everything that can go wrong will go wrong and that my job that I am making with tips over about 2000 to 2400 a month was not secure that's dollars because I could lose it at any time and need to save just mm -hmm. in case something happens yeah valid advice for a parent to be giving all the time you know like a, pa oh, a parent me... telling you to save is pretty typical run-of-the-mill stuff. Annoying, but like, you know, their oh, job. Oh, okay, buying a new fucking car. Huh, oh, dad? <laughs> this is so weird. What is this guy? <laughs> and everything else and how I'm unable to look after a baby at this time because everything will fail, so just focus on getting prepared for that. It's very obvious that it's like, surely the thing that you'd be most, most emotionally invested in, the thing that'd be most upsetting, is to be a 22 year old guy preparing to foster kids. That is really unusual and a thing that like most people would be like, are you sure you're ready to do that? I think there's definitely some other baggage going on <laughs> that this guy feels like weird about and is just not telling us. Because I, I cannot understand it based on what's been described here. Like- I, I think it's probably the, the foster care stuff. That's surely gonna be the biggest but his dad hasn't actually been like... Yeah, not at all. Hasn't actually been disapproving of that stuff, that's what I mean. I it sounds like he's generally just probing and trying to make sure that he's okay. I... Um, I... Uh, <laughs> he didn't... weigh that exact thing, but it was basically what he meant. Oh, he didn't say that exact thing, but it was basically what he meant. Although, again, I think it was good intention. So the, so, so the, so the like thing well he intentions. said that was really mild wasn't even what he said. Yeah. I... I used to contact him every day on Skype. Yeah, this could only arise out of someone who was <laughs> right. really close with his dad before, of course. Yeah, yeah that and makes sense. I was like, I think you're cutting my dad out of my life. Um, but it has been four to five days since I last talked to him. I'm just super angry that he can never just say congrats or say something encouraging. Like, stop prophesizing the apocalypse. My mum said she hopes I succeed because she knows how much the foster thing means to me. So yeah, he is the big issue. If he says something, if he says anything like what he has said again, saying how I need to plan for, fa for failing or tries to give me financial advice, for 22, <laughs> or advice about waiting till a little later, to do something, obviously fostering, right? He's like, maybe 22 is a bit young to be fostering children. <laughs> you were literally a teenager fucking three years ago. <laughs> Fuck, man. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Or about how my job slash income is not enough or stable. I'm going to cut him out of my life. I have not given him a warning or told him how I feel. It is simply going to be abrupt and final. Why would you want- Ugh. Oh, he is at the last straw and needs to think before he says shit. <laughs> His dad sounds so nice. Oh my god. This guy is just like- This guy is just like nearly at the point of saying he's gonna throw hands with his dad. His over dad his dad just, just like saying normal, like every day. normal dad advice stuff, you know? I just don't know what the fuck to do with this kid. <laughs> My dad has been, TLDR, my dad has been saying such giving advice that feels backhanded, even though it is good intentioned, and I am prepared to kick him out of my life if he does it again, even though I have not informed him of how I feel. Am I justified? Just tell him Should how I you give feel! Him a heads up? If you can explain, sorry, if you can explain in human words to another human being how those feelings are supposed to make sense, you should tell him. Uh, I'm not sure he will be able to understand, but, you know. So the goons, <laughs> this is what I, I read out, <laughs> the goon just said, Dad has the gall to tell me my dumb fuck ideas are dumb. Sever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the last post. Yes. We should go to bed. Yes. I want to play the song. The song that I had as the end credits to the video. Whoa! How's the rising song? That's what it's called. Yeah. I just wanted to play a bit of it.
House of the Rising Sun. Um, I'm kind of thinking I should do this for the rest of the Monster Hunter series since I did it for the first one, right? Just like a, a little acoustic cover. Oh, different one. Playing something. I don't know, I was kind of thinking it would be neat for the vampire one because of the... Um, because of Interview with a Vampire ending with... Uh, um, that song... I can't remember any of the thing right now. I'm really dizzy from two beers. Um, <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Hope you guessed my name. You know? Tom Cruise shows up and then it starts saying, you know. Right. I could learn that song. And that could be the one, the, the outro for the vampires video. Yeah. I just think that would be neat. I just think that'd be neat. Sympathy for the devil. Sympathy like for the devil. That's what it's called. I could learn that one. I could learn other songs. I don't know. I think it's a nice idea. Yeah, it'd be fun. Go to bed. Alright. I thought it was just a nice mellow note to hand out the stream on. Yeah. Thank you everybody for hanging out. It's been a really nice time. I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope you liked my performance just now. <laughs> mm -hmm. As well as all our posts. Remember you can submit posts by tagging me at Vema Sophie or Natalie at Snornat on Twitter or on the Discord if you're on the Discord with any posts that you see that you think will be good and we'll read them out next Friday. Um, I have a video up on Patreon at the moment. It's the first Patreon goal reward video. It'll be out in two weeks. It's Zack Snyder, a world based on spite, and it's available for $2 or more than $2 patrons. There's also a behind the scenes video for how I made the title sequence of Monster Men, which is all original footage and all, pra uh, all practical effects. And uh, I think it's pretty good and pretty informative. It's also a bit vloggy, so you know, just like if you just want to see behind the scenes, kind of. Um, That's and. Fun you tell them about eels. I've got a channel called Next Slide Please mm -hmm. with my friend Jen yep. and my sibling Rach. Yep. And we take it in turns. We release a video every Friday and we take it in turns to present each other little PowerPoints. And this week's one is about eels. So go enjoy that. Rach just tells you a bunch of eels. Literally just listing eels, but it's it's way more fun than it sounds. <laughs> I think that sounds pretty fun. I I love to learn about eels, and I learned a lot watching it. Rach is like, look at these eels. They're not even eels. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. Um, Patreon.com slash CurioVids. Twitter.com slash Sophie if you want to follow me, if you don't already. Next slide, please. Um, there'll be more Monster Men in a couple of months, but next month is Cloudpunk. Hey. And in a couple of weeks, is Zack Snyder's coming out publicly, if you haven't already seen is that. Is it just a couple of weeks for your Zack Snyder one? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Two weeks to Zack You're Snyder. You're really stacking them back to back, like... Two weeks to Zack Snyder, and then two weeks after that, Cloudpunk. <sighs> you should take a break instead. No. All right, then. <laughs> No. I won't. All right. Nothing. Nothing. Nice says nothing but hits. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, and I will also play more Cloud Bunk. Um, oh, maybe over the weekend because I've just I've just finished a project, so I'm kind of free and easy and not really doing much right now. Please chill out. <laughs> um, and death, but but definitely so that like maybe that as an additional one, but definitely some uh, next Wednesday. And um, like I said, back every Friday with the posting stream. Okay, thank you everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye everybody. for now.